It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. Um, almost back. Almost back. First, first, first live podcast, first new podcast of 2021. Mm-hmm. Um how are you, Andrew Schultz? Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing Life great. is good. I'm well relaxed. How are you, bro? How was the ayahuasca? I didn't do it, man. Oh, uh, you scared, bro. You know why? You know why? Because you're scared. Uh, no, no, the play the place I'm gonna do it, um, I got like it's a I don't, I don't wanna give it away right now, but it's like a whole facility, but it's not it's it's definitely not in uh America. I wasn't in America, I was in Mexico, I went to Cabo. Cabo ain't the vibe for that to me. What do you mean? Well, you know yeah, it's saying? not the vibe at all. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where I was at in Cabo, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful community I was staying in. What'd you um, say? Beautiful. One and only? What's that? Was that the hotel you were at? Oh, no, I wasn't at a hotel. I was in a private community that people own. It, you can only own a property there. But being being that I, being that, you know, one of one of my partners owns a property there. Yeah. Um, salute to Miss Debbie Brown. They, uh, they allowed us to, they allowed us to, Rent out a property that the owners weren't in for that um for the, for the amount of time that we were there. Got you. I was I was there for like eight. I was there for like eight days. I mean, we I did a lot of uh a lot of spiritual work. I did like a lot of mindfulness practices, like you know yoga every morning. Tell us about the drugs, bro. We want to know about the drugs. We don't care about stress. I, I didn't do nothing but edibles, man. I'm not gonna lie. I punked out. I punked. I you even punked out on the out. shrooms. You I built punked that out on the shit shrooms, up, bro. bro. You I built did, that I did, shit did, up did, like you was about to do ayahuasca. <laughs> meet the elders. It was gonna be some Black Panther <laughs> shit, but nothing, bro. Come on. I, listen, I even punk, I, yo, I punked out on the shrooms. You didn't man. even do shrooms. I, Nah, I punked out. I punked out. I punked out. I wasn't ready. I don't Not do only that would shit, I, uh, Huh? I don't do that shit. Keep going, though. Listen, plant, plant-based plant plant based medicine is a thing. You know what I mean? I don't mind anything that's from the earth. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it, it's not like it's going to kill you. I just don't know if I'm ready to see what it's going to show me. Yeah. That's good. That's no. paranoia, bro. That's the reality. You know You're not I'm ready saying. to go to the dark side. You're not ready to see where this personality came from. Well, uh, you know, um, a, a, a healer. A healer that was there Keeler. told me, yeah, they told me, they told me that, um, arrogant thing to call yourself a healer. Not really. I'm a healer. I heal. Hey man. I heal. Yeah. They, but they, I mean, they, they, they put in the time and the work to get to this place, but they told me that right. I'm, I'm already in the psychic realm a lot. You know what I'm saying? And so I was just like, I don't know. It kind of like just made me, I, I just got my, 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 put it like this. Like I told them my psychic abilities told me not right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think I think that's your paranoia abilities, your anxiety abilities. That's what you? they told me. They yeah, said that yeah. to me too, which actually by the way felt a lot like peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it felt it felt it felt a lot like, you know, go ahead and just do a line. Bro. <laughs> All right. Bro, I get it and I will tell you, I don't know, I think you might have spoken about this before, maybe even years ago, but like I'm a pretty um risk taking individual, right? I don't mind risks. I do mm-hmm. things that outside of I have a huge fear of heights, but outside of that, like I'm willing to do something dangerous because I find that that danger kind of fun. Um but for the first time in my life, I was feeling so filled with gratitude mm. for all the things that I've been able to have, you know, not mm. only career-wise, but love-wise, you know, family and I and I had all these Amazing things. And I started going, why, why are you, why are you risking it? Why, why, why are you risking going surfing? Why are you risking? Are you, you are, you had some fun surfing. Do you really need to stay out a little bit longer? Something bad could happen. Like I felt as if I was, I wasn't being grateful enough to God as if God was like, you really want to do that risky shit after all the shit I gave you? I gave you Absolutely. all this beautiful shit. And you really want to stand on the side of that mountain and look off of that cliff? You going to do that Absolutely. to me? Does that Absolutely. make sense? It makes total sense because in, in <clears throat> you, you said this to me before. It's like, it's not just about you anymore, bro. You got a fiance. Yes. You yes. got, you got employees. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you're taking care of your parents. You know what I mean? Like, yes. You can't just put yourself in a position where there's no Andrew Schultz. When there's no Andrew Schultz, that changes the whole ecosystem for a lot of people. Well, let me tell you something. In Hawaii, there was almost no Andrew Schultz. Really? Yeah, I almost died. There's no such thing. I don't, why do people say stuff like that? I almost died. I, 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 I almost died, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. How do you almost you die? 
I drowned. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> All right, explain. I I told on flagrant, so I'll be quick. But I was surfing. It was a beautiful day. I'd surfed two days. I went out the third day, and it, I was in Lanai, Hawaii. Right, small island, three thousand people. It's owned by Larry Ellison. Right, and I was saying this beautiful uh, resort. They have a surf spot in front of the resort, but they tell you you can't surf there. They even tell you a lie. They go, oh, it's a marine uh, something zone, you know, protected marine zone. You can't surf there. I saw people surfing. I go out surf the third day. I take off on a wave. The takeoff for the wave is right in front of some reef and rock, right? I fall in the takeoff, and because it's so shallow, I spread out because I want to fall as shallow as I possibly can. So instead Starfish. Of, exactly. I go straight starfish. I go into the water, I try to swim up to the surface, and all of a sudden, my leash is tugging me. I think it's just because the wave is pulling my board away, and then I realize, oh shit, the leash is wrapped around the reef. The leash is connected to me, wrapping around the reef. Now, here's the thing. When I was going to the surface, I felt my hands breach the surface, and I, the second I feel my hands breach the surface, naturally, I just blow out my air so I could take my first breath of air. I blew out my air, and then I stopped. I'm still under the water. I'm scraping. I'm kicking. I'm doing everything I possibly can. I can't get up. I panic. Can't. Son, crazy panic. I take a breath of water. I thought that means you die. When you take a you breath can take of a water. breath of water. I took a breath. Oh. That shit was, yeah, it was like a bong rip. Okay. Okay. All of a sudden, I got this extreme focus. There was one task at hand and all my fear and anxiety turned into focus. And I was like, you just got to get that leash off. If you get that leash off, you'll be able to swim up to the surface. So weird. In that moment of survival, like everything honed in and became pinpoint my focus. And I reached down uh, and I grabbed the leash. And the second I grabbed the leash, it popped the leash off of the coral and the board popped up and I went to the surface. Wow. I couldn't believe it, bro. Couldn't believe new, we should start calling you Little Half Dead. That's your new name. <laughs> <laughs> little Little Half Dead. That's your new name. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yo, I, that's what happened. I hit death with a hezzy, bro. You hit death with the hezzy. <laughs> I hit death with the hezzy, dude. Nah, you know, damn, that would have been fucked up. I'm sitting there thinking if Andrew Schultz passed away, thank God you didn't. I mean, yeah. Is, is Schultz Saves America fire enough? That you die a legend? Yo. <laughs> you got to think yo, of, He saved think America, but he like couldn't that. save himself. <laughs> <laughs> yo, the jokes would have been, that would have been the joke. That, that would have been, been the, joke, that would have been the one that everybody kept retweeting over and over. Mm -hmm. Wow. Show saved America, but he couldn't save himself. I thought about that under the water. I was like, nah, I got to make it out of this. Not right now. You got to make right. another one. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got, on, you man. got too, you got too much work to do. We got a lot of work to do. I can't die yet. Nah, you got a lot of work to do. That is that is a true feeling, though, man. And that that's actually a, uh, you know, let's get into it. Positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. I think that's a positively brilliant place to be. I think that when you get to that place of gratitude, where you're just thankful mm. and grateful for mm. life. Like, mm. I was on the toilet taking a shit on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is after being at the bar all day by the pool, like, just drinking mad tequila, right? Okay. And you ain't, we're in Mexico, so we're drinking the finest of tequilas. By the way, why would you ever want to build a wall around Mexico? Such an amazing, such an amazing place to go. You know what I mean? For, for the tequila alone. All right? But, you know, we're, we're drinking tequila. Which tequila were you drinking? I was actually drinking um, Casa Dragones Añejo. Casa Dragones? Casa Dragones, Casa Dragones Añejo. I like the Añejo, too. Yeah, I was drinking that and I was on the toilet, man. And I just literally was taking a shit. And at first I thought it was like my stomach because of all the Mexican food and the tequila. Mm -hmm. But then I realized I was just so filled with joy mm -hmm. and gratitude and gratefulness. And it was literally all because of my family and friends. Not even anything professionally. Just sitting there thinking how I'm surrounded by such a great circle. Yeah. Bro, I started crying, man. Yeah. Wiped my ass, got up and just hugged on my wife. Now that I think about it, I'm like, damn, I didn't even wash my hands before I hugged them. That's fine. I never That's love, that. though. Yeah, that That's is love. beautiful, man. That's love. Well, I'm excited well, how for was, you, man. You went to, what else did you do in Hawaii? Anything else good? Um, Yeah, it was just amazing to get away. Like, I probably saw, during the whole vacation, I probably saw, like, 15 people, maybe, maybe total. 
You know, like I was just all you super need. Removed. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I just wanted, we've been working so fucking hard and I just wanted to kind of like get away from everything. So it was great. But it was so, I mean, I was just super grateful, man. It was just great. Like the I, reaction that we got from the special and like, most importantly, like the people sharing it. Like it's one thing to watch something and enjoy it. It's another thing to like take your phone out, videotape yourself watching it and then write, yeah. you have to watch this. Everybody must watch this. And just to see so many people do that, like so many people feel like they were rooting for me. It was, yeah, I know it was, it was touching, man. You know, I, you know, it was touching. Sometimes it's hard to explain those emotions, but it was, because we because uh, we live in this era where everybody is so quick to tell you how fucked up they think you are. Mm. It's so quick to tell you how much they don't like you. The slander comes easily, comes more easily than the love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you see the love, you're like, wow. No, yeah, that's all. If I'm not gonna lie, it felt like virtual reality being out of the country, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because we've been in the house. I mean, the only reason I'm in the house now is because I'm being a responsible American. Man, and, pull up you to know, the studio, bro. We're immune out here, dog. Nah, I come immune. next week. You can't catch it twice. You can't. Not me. You can't catch it twice. Not me. Man, not listen, me, bro. Not as I me. always tell people, I couldn't catch death. Is, listen, you there's no way. Two, th those two motherfuckers. Actually, let me take that back. Sorry, God. Exactly. I apologize, God. I no. apologize, God. Forget God. You better apologize to death. That, you see that metal thing standing behind you? Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. Listen, the Grim Reaper and COVID are two invisible entities that's always ready to show you they are, man. a word. Oh, hey. okay, bet. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay bet. Is okay, for bet. Real, dog. That's what I COVID thought it was. COVID in death is like, okay, bet. Oh, a word? Damn, okay, you can't bro. catch me twice? Okay, bet. Bro, I was underwater, man. I was like, man, you fucking didn't spend any time with your fiance for three months while you were doing this special. And the second you go on vacation, you out there surfing without her. Jesus Christ. I was like, is this the way? Yeah, I always is feel this I, the I, way, I, bro. Yeah, I always feel bad for fiances who um significant others die. Yeah, that's, you should. Are you, they're little half widows. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I do, I do. <laughs> but they don't even get, you know what I'm saying? They don't even get, to, they don't even get to be whole widows, bro. <laughs> you know, they significant, they significant other dies and they can't even be like, yo, I'm a whole widow out here, bro. Yeah, it's like, you, no. You almost. You was going to be. <laughs> the Grim Reaper snatched that <laughs> ring off your finger. <laughs> Listen, what, what did you see this week that made you say positively brilliant? What a fucking idiot. Man, is Kanye blowing that uh, makeup guy, girl? What? <laughs> you haven't heard about this? No. Oh, word on the streets is the reason Kim and Kanye are getting divorced was because Kanye was hooking up with Jeffrey Starr, who's like this. Shut up. Son, y'all haven't been on Twitter? Andrew, Andrew Dude, Hilton. Jeffrey Starr. Shout out to Jeffrey Starr. Bad bitch. Har Bad Andrew bitch. Hilton. Harvey Schultz. <laughs> T TM flagrant. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you getting this from? <laughs> Son, the news, Twitter, that's where I get my shit. Twitter and academics. I haven't seen that nowhere. Yeah, Kanye was out there smoking poles, bro. You didn't know Ale he was out there smoking poles, allegedly? Jesus Christ. Yo, He's nothing's off wrong with that, bro. <clears throat> he got the cutest 20 dude. You starting off 2021 as a gossip girl. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Jesus Christ! Don't don't lose that goddamn Netflix money because you're getting caught up in a defamation suit. Uh, I already spent that shit on vacation, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is gone. Your boy was balling on vacation. No boo. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I get I get uh I get sad when I see divorce stories. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I do. I'm not going to lie. I get, I get sad when I see divorce. Yo, yo, you, get, yo, you know what I love about you? you <laughs> you're so attached from like negative emotions that like you make declarative statements about yourself as if they're different from other people. Like You'd be like, I'm sad when a girl's boyfriend dies. I get sad no. when people get divorced. It's like, yeah, yeah but listen, so but, 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 time out, time out, time out, time out. No, that's not true. That's not true. Are yeah, you for you to see listen, in the dark as well? That's, that, that's not <laughs> true. If, by the way, if we're using just social media as a gauge, yeah. motherfuckers ain't sad. Kanye and Kim divorced. They rejoicing. <laughs> they happy oh, as hell. You think they're happy? Uh, go look at the comments. Who do you think's happy? Do you think that like all the trans 
dudes is out there because they get to take a shot at the yay. Yay, um, yay, yay. I, I, th- I yay, think, yay. I think, I think, pe- I think, I think people are happy simply because social media is really the land of the miserable. Yo, it's it is so, so true, when, bro. Yeah, yeah so, so when you got two so people, true. when you got two people who uh, have been winning for so long, have made so much money, have no problem showing you how much money they make. They really don't. <laughs> and they, 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 really they live their motherfucking best lives regardless if it's a pandemic or World War Three. They don't mm-hmm. give a shit. They stunting. Yes, people are happy when they think that it's some misery that has entered their lives. Yeah. Yes. It sucks yes. that that's what social media has become, man, because it could be this tool like... I got a shout out. You want to know Positively Brilliant? I got a shout out. Barstool's Dave Portnoy, the guy who owns Barstool, right? Okay. He started this fund for businesses, small businesses struggling during the lockdown, during the pandemic. Okay? Okay. Nope. He's raised, I think, up to like $20 million or something like that. And he literally just calls these mom and pop businesses, a dry cleaners, a pizza store, something like that, right? And just calls them up, be like, yo, we're going to help you get through it. And you see these adults start to break down because they know that the thing they've worked their entire lives for, this business, is going to have a, at least a lifeline to get through the pandemic. I respect it. That's gangster. And I respect it. It is so fucking cool, man. It, it was so cool to see. And the power of giving, you can even really see on his face, like in the videos, that he's like really touched by the emotions, you know, of these people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those genuine emotions. And uh, I'm like, yo, that is also what social media could be. Social media could also be these really dope stories where people are giving back and giving people second chances for their business or whatever else. And I don't know if we would appreciate it if that's all it would be, but it's just cool to know there is another side to the completely negative, angry, lonely you know, pessimistic side of social media that is just trying to tear people down because you want them to be on your level, which is very low. And what you just said is absolutely true, but guess what? It's motherfuckers out there that'll find a way to twist that, and they'll be like, why the fuck he gotta put that online? Why he gotta record that? Why can't he just do it? Why can't he just show love? Why can't he just do it? Why he gotta record them? That shit is whack. Yo, like, it's I, like, yeah. come on, bro. Stop. Like, I'm telling you, they can find a way to twist anything. That's what I saw with the fucking idiots who got mad at Cardi B. Because uh, What Cardi do? Well, Cardi was listening to WAP. I don't know if this is an old video or a new video, but mm. he was listening to WAP, and, and culture comes running in the room, mm. and she did what any parent would do. She turned that shit the fuck off. Oh, she turned it <laughs> off. She turned it off. Why? And, um, if anybody knows how wet... She gets. Oh my god! It's probably the baby that slid out. But she 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 no. turned it off because she, she turned it off because people got upset because they were saying. And by the way, I can understand where people think the hypocrisy lies. They said that she can make this kind of music for other kids to consume, but doesn't want her own kid to consume it. Right? But the reality of the situation is this. There's a reason these songs have parental advisory That's stickers. That's it. Boom. She's no. not making this music for three-year-olds. Exactly. You know what I mean? This ain't no kids bop. It's no wet-ass pamper. All right? We talking pussy. All right? <laughs> okay? Yo, wet-ass not- pamper is lit. <laughs> oh, that's the kids bop version. You need to do wet-ass pamper. <laughs> you got that wet-ass pamper. What's the next I'm line of it? You. Listen, What's it's different. Yo, it's different. Song? It's mad ways you can flip the... The WAP for kids, Bob. Right, like, there's some else? chores in this house. There's some chores in this house. There's some chores in this house. You know what I'm saying? You can. It's all type of ways you can do it. It's some trash to take 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 out. It's some, some trash, trash to, to take, take out. out. It's some <laughs> trash to take out. <laughs> Yo, I saying? love that. Toilets clean them out. Toilets clean. It's different ways you can flip the motherfucker. You know what I mean? But here's the thing. And Cardi said it. Cardi's like, I'm not making music for kids. I'm making it for adults. The problem with music, there's no age limit. Like, even mm. though it's got a parental advisory sticker, it, you can walk in a record store and buy anything you fucking want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then when you got the radio playing the clean version of WAP, and I'm, I'm a kid in the car, and I'm like, well, what is this, mommy? Mm. And now mommy got to sit there and have an uncomfortable conversation, and daddy got to sit there and have an uncomfortable conversation, and this kid is old enough to go online and look up the song himself and, and be pleasantly surprised when he pulls up the video. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you can't be mad at Cardi because she don't want her three-year-old daughter to listen to WAP. Shit, I don't want my 12-year-old daughter to read none of my books yet. 
you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she give her a few years. Yeah. She, my my wife told her dad not to read none of my books. Really? Hey, man. Why? I and mean, they're talking about my wife's wop sometimes. Wait, you were know? you? Oh, um, that's right. And, and, and one, 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 one story in particular, when I had a pan, I literally had a panic attack in the midst of sex. And when Shook won anxiety playing tricks on me, I literally had a panic attack in the midst of sex. Super awkward. Now, how did you, know you I mean? how did you get out of that situation? Did you finish the job? Well, I mean, luckily I've been with my wife long enough that she understands when I get panic attacks. So she just tried to talk me off a ledge. Have this I ever seen you get a panic attack? This would be so funny. Straight you, to the I gram. I go live. Attack. Oh, I used to, yo, by the way, I used to get them a lot when we used to do like the red car business shit. I was wondering. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Absolutely, absolutely. But the, the 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 best part about that is we were all together. So yeah, you could. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and, and when you and when you're all together with a bunch of comedians, and you're not the comedian. Yeah. I don't gotta perform. Yeah, but you're <laughs> you know? always very good at the uh, red carpet. Because I'm fo- I'm focusing. But I got I got to do something to keep my mind off of the moment. So when the microphones come in my face, it's something that makes me feel familiar and I'm comfortable. Uh, you know what I mean? So in those brief moments when we walk in the red carpet and we're talking, cool. And then other than that, it's like we're sitting in our seats. And, you know, it was a moment. Where I'm, it was a period in my life where I'm just waiting. All right, who about to approach me? Who yeah, am I going to have yeah. to tell? Get the fuck out my face. Yeah. Suck my dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was crazy. They wouldn't even let Wax sit with us. I was your security guard for like the first two years that we were going to those MTV things. That's true. And then everybody started like, they started liking wax. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then he and could protect I- you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> then you were protectable. Once they thought he was a nice guy, they're like, oh, I guess it's fine. <laughs> no, that is, that is very, that very is true though. True, man. That is true. That is true. Listen, positively brilliant. Mm. Um, uh, not the Democrats, not the Democrats winning the Senate runoff. Oh, yeah. The, the organize, the, 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 yeah, the political, the political black culture that Georgia has created and is thriving right now in Georgia is very mm. impressive. Just, mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's a combination of, you know, organizations like Stacey Abrams Fair Fight and the New Georgia Project. It's, 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 it's grassroots organizations like um, what Tasha Brown does with Black Votes Matter. You know, you, you have people like Tamika Mallory and Untell Freedom on the ground. It's the rappers. I love to see all the articles that CNN wrote and Rolling Stone about how these rappers in Atlanta have mobilized people so much that they've become political kingmakers. Mm. You know what I mean? And in particular, Killer Mike, of course, T.I., you know, Jeezy, Jermaine Dupree. It's just good to see that community come together, mobilize. And man, first they flipped the state blue that hasn't been a, a, a blue state. I don't know if ever. Mm. If, if if it has been, it's been years, years, mm. years, 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 years. Right. And, you know, now they just, you know, got the first black senator ever in the South and Reverend Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff won. I just think that what they did in Georgia is big and I think it should be um, replicated throughout America. And not, and not even just for, for, for Democrats, whatever your party is, that's the kind of mobilization you need. That's mm. the kind of organization and unity and group operation you need. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. get behind. I'm not. I'm not arguing with anybody anymore about politics. Yeah. Rep what you want to rep. Believe in what you want to believe in. But when it comes time to put those people in those positions of power, take care of business. Plot, plan, organize, and strategize like my man Killer Mike said. Mm. Simple as that. So, yeah. I can't wait to not care about politics. I I think we're well past that, Andrew. You're making too much money now. Yeah, that's true. Making too much money now. Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah. you gotta care. You gotta yeah. care about state taxes. You nah, gotta care tax about federal real, taxes. Yeah. That's yes. how I'm, I almost fired everybody yesterday. Sure. I almost fired everybody. <laughs> I was so when I found out. When I, <laughs> talk to me about it. This is <laughs> no, the pain I like to feel. When I found out how me. much I got paid taxes, I called my business manager. I said, "This is the first thing I said." They're like, they're like, "Hey, happy New Year!" I said, "What do you do for me?" Bro. What do you Bro. do for me? <laughs> I was like, don't ever email me again. He goes, this is this is how they try to play you. This is good news. This means you're making money. I was like, well, hide it. 
Let's do something. Really? Let's do something really? illegal. What are we doing out here? Brilliant idiots, listeners. Um, I know that you've been riding with Andrew Schultz and Leonard McKelvey for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the part where I really need y'all to act like y'all in a safari. All right. <laughs> just ride in, just just ride in the Jeep and listen. For those of us who don't understand where we're coming from, God. I can already see some, I can already see some of the comments. Y'all complaining about having to pay more taxes. That's yes. so easy to say until yes. you got to pay high six figures in taxes. Hey. Okay? Bro. Hey, bro. Hey. Now, here's the thing. I I was thinking about this. I was like, "Yo, how do I make this relatable because if anybody if I heard anybody having this conversation, I would say, suck my dick, you spoiled motherfuckers. Why are you complaining? That's what I would say. 100%. So if anybody's thinking that, I get it. So I was like, how do I make this Easy. conversation relatable? Okay, e I have an Easy idea for you. Go. We're new money, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We just started making fucking money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take it I mean, from real us, money, man. like real. I mean, <laughs> by the way, I mean, don't get me wrong. We've all been, we've been doing well for a long time. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But like, yo, do you know how it feels? For a motherfucker just to come and literally like just take large six figures out your bank account and you don't even know where the fuck is going? Bro. Get the fuck out of here, man. It's this is what there's two things that bother me about it. And I think everybody should be bothered by, by this type of thing. I think it should be illegal to pay. Well, number one thing that bothers me is I'm a thing, I'm a person like uh when I like fairness. You know what I mean? But I'm talking about fairness on like a universal scale, right? When the balance is untipped, uh, when the balance is tipped, I don't like it. It bothers me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, if I'm waiting online and a motherfucker gets to skip the line, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We, we're all waiting online or somebody skips or we all skip, but we're not doing this. You get to skip and then we all don't have to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it's, uh, unless it's something wrong. Or unless I get to I skip. Or if the guy's rushing for a flight or something. Like <laughs> now, nah, even if you're rushing for a flight, it's like, you should have got here early like me. I didn't sleep. You know what I mean? Like, I woke up early. I'm tired. You're not tired because you didn't have to wake up early. Get your shit together, right? So, this is the shit that bothers me. I know these real rich motherfuckers ain't paying taxes, bro. No, uh, I know, I know. they're not paying taxes. And I know they set up a system so they cannot pay taxes. And, and I, I want in on that system. I want in. I want in. <laughs> clearly, clearly, we're not in that elite level yet. We're not Because I know for a fact, when Donald Trump tax returns came out, I hit my financial guy and I said, said I how, want how this. How do I do it? How do I Give do it? Give me the fucking Trump, bro. How do I do it? Do I got to dye my hair red? Should I gain some weight? What the Yo, fuck what needs to happen? What do we got to do? Do I need we to get an orange hue? <laughs> All right. Are we moving to Florida? Or are we moving to Florida? Fuck what are we doing? Born. <laughs> I'm with you. Yes, I'm with you. Do we so, got to put some of these S cores and LLCs in Florida? That's Texas? what I'm saying. Like, yes. What mother, do we got to yes. do? We already doing yes. it on Zoom. I moved to Ireland. I don't care. Right? Come on. I'm so, sorry, man. I'm, I'm feeling looking, my pain. I'm sorry. Bro, I'm looking at shit. I'm like, oh, Apple isn't even, like Apple's business hub ain't even in America. It's in Ireland. So that they could take advantage of a tax break. I'm looking at all these different companies, how they're getting rid of, uh, away with not paying taxes. I'm looking at all these motherfuckers. I'm like, oh, there's a system around the system and I don't have access to that shit. And you know what? That system is built. The reason why we're paying taxes is so that those motherfuckers don't have to. That's why we're paying taxes. The, the I, government is like, all right, we need you because you guys are these big businesses, so y'all don't got to pay taxes. But what we will do is we're going to jack it up on these suckers right here, and we're going to punish these suckers right here because they don't know how to get to this other system they built. And the fact that that imbalance exists drives me fucking crazy. Bro, when Jay-Z says on what's free, my accountant's so good, I'm practically living tax-free, I was like, I want his fucking accountant. You know what I mean? When I'm places like when I'm when I'm places like in Cabo and I'm looking around at this community and I'm looking at all of these nondescript people. And I'm not saying that you got to be, you know, famous in order to have money. But some of these people just look nondescript. Like, you know what I mean? They just look like Mr. Potato Heads that need some accessories. And I'm like, that's FICA. That's FICA, bro. That's FICA. That's FICA right there. That motherfucker is, is that's where my tax dollars are going mm, <laughs> to that human that right guy, there. No. Because it's got to be going somewhere. Because it ain't going. It ain't going to the communities that need it. Yo, and that, really, that's another thing. It's like, 
and now we sound like some real conservatives, but like if you gave us the money to put in the places we want, <laughs> right? We, we you gave us the money to put it in the places we want, we would do the right thing. And the right thing is keep it. <laughs> Well, no, but listen, <laughs> by, by the way, by the way, no, 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 no. by the way, I love philanthropists. I think philanthropy is a real thing. I understand yes. why people put philanthropy in their bio. I yes. understand why people go up on TV and they put philanthropy in their lower third. That's a real thing. Like, I enjoy being a philanthropist. I yeah. am the guy who gave a quarter million dollars to South Carolina State University. You know Damn, what I'm saying? To open bro. Up a scholar- the, you know that. To open up a scholarship fund for my, for my, for my, for my, in my mother's name, right? Now. If I knew what I was having to pay in taxes the next year, I probably wouldn't have did that. You know what I mean? Maybe not the whole 250. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, 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 but that's just what happens when you are still figuring out how this shit works. Well, but that's why you got to have... you figuring it out. But that's what... But by the way, Schultz, mm-hmm. this is why you got to have the best people around you, bro. You got to invest in a good financial person. My, my, my dude, my dude, Humble is a beast. He's at Humble is actually one of the top 10... Uh, Business managers, financial guys in Hollywood, according according to the Hollywood Reporter, the last couple of years, like he's a beast. I know we'd be doing brilliant idiots, and your phone would just stop working. You'd be like, "Oh shit, I forgot to pay that." I'd be like, "Bro, come on, get your shit together. Can you please? Can you please? You are too rich to have your phone bill be on not automatic." Do you remember those days? It's not even. By the way, it's not. Yeah, it's yo, not Schultz, the bills part. Me? You say, "Schultz, can you call me? Can you call me? Can you call me real quick." Something wrong with my phone. You call me? Yo, nothing. Nothing ruins your sense of validation like when that phone not ring, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not getting no text. I'm not getting. Yeah, my shit. Can you? Yo, imagine. Can, imagine the arrogance and the ego of you to think nobody's calling you because your phone's off. Yo, son. Like, oh, motherfucker, that's how, your phone's. No, nah, that's connected. That, that's true though, because like you ever get. You ever get off a flight and you ain't got no texts or like any DMs or nothing? You be like, let me turn this it's shit the area. off and on. I'm still bro. in a bad. Me, no, no, I'm still, yeah. I'm, I'm still in a bad area. Yeah, yeah. Which I so, get up front. When yeah, I, get yeah. up front. I don't think, it, I don't think it kicked in yet. I, it says I got service, but I don't think the service kicked <laughs> exactly. in yet. I don't got enough service to get enough DMs that I got coming in. My wife did that shit to me the other day. I don't know if she was trying to humble me or what. I was minding my business on the fucking plane. She said nobody said. And you know, and, and you know, usually when you land. When you land and you're, you're taxi and you, that's when you pull your phone out and you take yep. it off airplane mode. And, yep. you know, we were sitting there for a while because it was a plane still sitting there. Now I was responding to text. Right. But no matter of fact, we was in the car on the way home and she was like, you're not on the phone. Like nobody's calling you. I'm like, I don't feel like talking. I'm texting. Like I just came from a week of meditation. Yeah. All right. By the way, meditation is great, bro. I should have added that to my repertoire a long time ago. I, like, I actually know how to meditate now, show. Really? I do. I didn't know how to meditate before. I actually know how to meditate now. Like, I literally, I have these, I have these, this, these beads, and it's like you count the beads. So, like, you start off with one wave. So it's one wave of um, breathing exercise, inhaling, exhaling, and then it's another wave of counting the beads where it's a chant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so I'm doing yeah. my chant. What is and then after your I do my, I can't, I can't, it's my, your, I can't say it. It's my, my personal chant. mantra. I just call it a trant. No, nah, it's my personal chant. mantra. What's the one where you get your own mantra? I don't know. What? Can you just tell us our mantra? Tell us your mantra, No, bro. I can't tell you the mantra. It's for me. It's my own personal mantra. I can't tell you. But I will say I got to repeat the mantra like 108 times. Mm-hmm. I got to count every beat. And then after that, I go into complete silence. And I promise you, man, mm-hmm. that shit right there. Feels good, huh? Bro, that shit is hitting the reset when you down 21-0 in Madden, bro. When you down 21-0 in Madden, and you got to hit that motherfucking reset that button. That's what meditation is, bro. That shit is actually good for you. And what now, scared me this year go. going into 2021 is um, it was a couple of times I was asked, what are my manifestations for 2021? Ooh. Yeah, we were on the boat meditating, and I was asked that, and then we were in our circle Praying and meditating, and I was asked that. All I saw was a blank canvas, and so white whiteness. That's it. White. It was just a blank canvas. Like I didn't see. I was like, wow, because you know, you. I'm the vision board guy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I got all of these different goals and aspirations and things I want to accomplish. I don't have none of that this year. Mm. Only mm. thing I want to do is just. I want to just serve, right? I want to serve. I want to serve other people. And just execute what's execute what's on what's already you know on the field. Yeah, I think I execute I, the plays I think in the I playbook. Know what yours are, but uh, and me. I think you've been. 
I think the transition you've made in your life recently and you're going through all these different things that I tease you about, you know, hugging trees and, you know, dealing with different rocks and that kind of stuff, but also like therapy meditation is like, you're making the transition that very few people get the opportunity to make, which is going from surviving to living. Ooh. And in life, at first we're all surviving. Maybe when we're kids, we don't even know it. You're kind of like living with your parents. They're supporting you, but like you're still trying to survive in your own kid like way. You're like trying to survive school and not being bullied and all these kind of things. And it's like, mm-hmm. You work as an adult, you go through school, you work, and then you get a job. And hopefully that job pays you enough money where you can survive. And a lot of people, they need to, most people on the planet, they need to work every single day or five days a week. And then they need to work that next week. They can't stop working. And their life is based around working because if they stop working, then they die, right? Or they potentially die, right? Some people get to a financial state where... They can stop working if they want and they can survive. Doesn't mean they're going to be rich for the rest of their life, but they can survive and they can take care of their family. And at that point- Doing nothing is a luxury. Yes. And at that point, you start experiencing living. And that's the point where you're like, yo, I got to figure out how to live because every day before this, if I didn't bust my ass and work, I would be dead and my family would be dead. So I was surviving. But now that I know my family's good and I know I'm good, I might as well figure out how to get the most out of this life thing that I got in front of me. And that's always been a greater goal of mine is to have that like very unique opportunity to, to live, to not survive, to truly live, to have enough financial capital where I could take care of my family and everybody needs to be taken care of. And then have the opportunity where to, to really figure out what life is like when you remove the tiger that's chasing you, you know, which yeah, is survival, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever those things. So I think that's what your journey that you've been on recently has been. It's like, how do I be okay just being me? Yeah, I mean, I I agree with half of that. I definitely agree with the living and the thriving part. Um, and it's not that I I disagree about the financial part because people who tell you things like they had more money when they was poor and all that that's that's a lie. That's that's, that's, that's nobody nobody lie. ever says they had more money when they were poor. No, they do. They, they, that's that's something they try to say to sound like fake deep. Or when oh, they want what? people to have sympathy for them. You know what I mean? Oh, like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, I had more money when I was broke. I had more money when I was poor. Like, eh. Okay. You, no, I don't you, even understand that. You you, <laughs> you actually <laughs> didn't. You literally and by the way, And by the way, and by the way, if you did, oh. you, were a ki- you were a kid. Ask your parents if they had fun. Yeah. All right. When they, when they ask, you, ask your parents if they had fun. They're using they money poor. as a metaphor for happiness. Exactly. And right. that's, that's what I think already it is. Wrong. I don't think, um, yeah. yeah, I don't think money, um, I don't think money can help you live. And the only reason I say that is because I, I know so many people who just wake up every day, man, and, 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 and they live their best lives and it don't have anything to do with money. Like they really do appreciate the simple things in life. And that's why I always say like success is subjective. Mm. You know what I mean? Happiness is subjective. There's all, there's somebody right now, I promise you making $30,000 a year, and they wake up every morning and they got a beautiful family. Or they may not even have a family. They might just have themselves, but they love life. They love what they do and they are happy. You ever seen that janitor that's just cleaning the halls, but they're always singing? You know what I mean? Or, or that traffic guard that's outside the school, but they dancing and putting on the show for people every morning and making everybody else's day better. Like those people exist. And when I look at people like that, man, it just really makes you it just makes you want to live, like you said. You know what I mean? I just want yeah. to live my best life. I want to be the best, the best version of me. And I've I've genuinely found these things that make me feel good. The, the, the more I can still my mind, the more I can keep my mind calm, the more I can keep my mind from constantly racing, the more I can keep my mind from constantly caring about bullshit. Yeah. Because that's the other, another thing, Schultz. We're in a business where we have to... You cannot do Schultz Save America if you don't have at least... Two years worth of bullshit stored in your brain yeah, <laughs> to, be, to, to be able to spew. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. I got to get on that radio every morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and care about this low energy bullshit. Yeah. Well, that's, you know what I mean? That's, that's, you're 100% right. That's why, like, when people are like, yo, you're going to do it again in 2021, it's like, I got to be compelled to do it. Like, this past year, I felt like there were so many things that were happening in the world. 
and where mm. I thought the, that America specifically was so divided, or at least the perception of a division was so right, uh, rife in like culture that that I don't know. I just felt compelled. I was like, "Yeah, we need to do this. We need to do something that speaks to this." Right. So when people keep going like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna do it again in 2021, 2022," is this a yearly thing? I was like, "Well, let's see how 2021 goes because if everything is beautiful, it's not needed. If it's needed, then I'll deliver it." But the, the the amount of fucking time and sacrifice a project like that takes is literally a quarter of your year is completely dedicated to it. I mean, you saw you saw us in here every time you would pull up in the studio. It's just like nonstop. So for me to do that, I could never do that on some frivolous shit. I could so fuck around caught, on a pod so on some stupid, uh, you know, Kanye story with the Jeffree Star, which is obviously bullshit or whatever like that. Obviously, that's jokes. But like to really dig deep into something like that, bro. Yo, it's it's got to be your team. You and your team caught COVID for the culture, bro. For the culture, bro. For cultural <laughs> purposes, bro. Yo, how are we going to talk about it if we can't be about it? You know what I mean? Exactly. Walk the Andrew walk. Andrew caught COVID just so he can fucking properly talk about bro, COVID. Bro, I put the COVID on the table and just... <laughs> Did a line of that it. shit up like it was nothing, bro. <laughs> Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? No, man, but what you're saying is true. And that's why you, you got to take those breaks and you got to you got to decompress because yeah. I'm really in tune with energy. And a lot of this shit is low energy. You know, I, you know, why I like doing the Brilliant Idiots podcast because we can come in here and kick the shit, not just about the bullshit that's out there, but just this life, this conversation, life, this conversation is good for me and what the fuck uh, I need to be doing when I execute. Because if we're going to have these platforms, man, you know, I can't get into the performative shit. That's why I don't even want you to get stuck into the show saves America. thing. Because what you said is very true. This year called for that. Yo, that's the thing. 2020 called for that. We got Now do, what's yes. 2021 calling you to exactly. do? Exactly. We got to do projects that we're compelled to do. Not because there's like a check in front of us. Like we ain't work so hard to build our own platforms, you know what I mean? And build up, build up things that we own ourselves so that we had to do projects for financial reasons. We're very yeah. fortunate and blessed. So I only want to do things that I'll dedicate everything to. So yeah, if yeah, 2021 yeah. requires a show saves America and, and there are things that I feel compelled to talk about, then I'm going to talk to the boys and we're going to get cracking on it, you know? But if it requires something else, and we could do that as well. I mean, I still got the stand-up special that I'm going to put out, you know? Ooh. And then, I'll be honest, Charlotte, I've been thinking about it a lot. I want to I wanna do a film. I want to do a film. Got to. I want to I do a film. So I think in the next to. couple of years, a film as well. I so mean, now, listen, yeah. you, we, we, can, we, can, we can get working on that now. You know what I'm saying? Because that's something that I'm willing to even finance. You know what I'm That's saying the thing, like, 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 part of me feels like we could finance it. We could do all the things for it. And then I want to create, I, it doesn't have to feel like an indie because we know how to create top quality stuff. We have all the equipment, and everything like that. But I want the grassroots approach that everything else that we've done has been grassroots from the podcast, YouTube clips, all these things. It's just like, the people, even for the show tapes America, that starts on Instagram and YouTube. The people made that pop in before anybody else does, right? So if we could create a movie, I would love to put out like a movie every three years. Same cast. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like just to tell stories. Just to, like literally I watch Ocean's 11, 12, 13 and I go, I have so much fun just watching these films. Yes, like, remember, remember when we were kids, there were certain things they just make a few of those movies. You're like, oh, I just love existing in the world. It was like a podcast for us in a way. You know we like I mean? crews. Say what? You like crews. I like the crew, man. For real. You like the crew. You, you you do realize this year is the 10 year anniversary of Guy Code, right? Ah, that's fire, dude. This year, that's that time fire. goes by fast like a motherfucker. I was talking to my man Paul Ritchie, like this year What's is up, the Paul? Ten, <clears throat> this year is the 10 year anniversary of Guy Code. So, you know, for everything that we're doing on TV, when you see Schultz with the Netflix special, me with the Comedy Central Shaw, any any of the different iterations you've seen us on television over the years, it started with that. All started with that. With 100%. that, it, it, liter it literally started with that show. Like, there was a yeah. bunch of unknown people on that show. A bunch of unknown people and that hating, bitter-ass man named Ashley Larry. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that hating, bitter ass man, Ashley Larry, was literally the biggest TV name on that show at the time. Can we squash that beef between you guys? Because I'm just tired of seeing him post all the gay shit on his uh, Instagram. I might have it's, to unfollow the it's, Instagram or it's, mute it. Nah, I, don't, I, I look nice in a dress. Stop. <laughs> yeah, oh, yo, yo, yo. So what? 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 When are we gonna stop the beef between you and Donnell? Hey, I don't. Come on, now you know good and damn well that is one sided. Okay, you don't ever we gotta get Donnell on. Say anything? We gotta get Donnell on. <clears throat> he could, because a lot, a good percentage of his Instagram feed is dedicated to. Sh- you have two Instagrams. You have. He's obsessed. Donnell is obsessed with three people. Okay. Bernard McKelvey, mm-hmm. Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. and Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> he, po- he posts about us more than he posts about his son. Think about I want him to think about that. You post about us more than you post about your own son. You're in good company, right? though, bro. You are in good company. Man, those are some goats. Listen, I'm just saying. Hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've gotten J- Joe Rogan told me I'm the last great radio personality. You know what I'm saying? Told me I'm one of the best. Great compliment. Dave Chappelle has told me the same. You know, told me some other things that I'll keep to myself. But you know, when, when they come true, I'll be like, damn, Dave Chappelle said that. A lot of it is a lot. By the way, a lot of it has come true. You know what I'm saying? A lot of it. So yes, I I'm I'm, I'm happy to be in that company. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ashley Larry. Okay. So, um, but, but, so this is okay, a safe, you, you think maybe this is like a safe expression of uh, admiration. It's easier to take down than it is to admire type of thing. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I appreciate it. I just, I, I'm telling you, I live, take his videos <laughs> and scratch his name out. Yo, the one he did of me with the money resides face, he thought, he thought he was slick. He put the name right in the middle of the guy's chest. Yeah. I got graphic guys too, motherfucker. <laughs> the hell is you talking about? You think you're the only person out here with graphic guys? Hey, I don't even got to say anything no more. I send my people the video, you know what to do. <laughs> 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 and then when I repost it, and it gets all of these likes and comments and goes viral, he gets so mad, tries to repost the video that I, that the video he posts that I repost, yeah. he'll repost it with my caption. Nobody cares, Donnell. <laughs> Ashley Larry, nobody cares. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Great job in Soul, though. Yeah, great brother. job in Soul. He killed it in Soul, man. Soul was a great movie. I'm not going to lie. I thoroughly enjoyed Soul. Oh, I also want to, positively brilliant to the cast I of Soul. I thought it was, maybe- eh. Really? That was eh. I mean, it made, it made me think a lot. I'm not gonna lie. It really made me think. And a lot of Disney movies do that through animation. It just made me think, like, yo, is there like? Because I hear about you hear about the limbo space, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This whole, yeah. I just thought it was like a. Actually, Alex, is your mic on? Yeah. Did you see Soul yet? No. Oh fuck. Uh, I'm curious to th- to see if anybody who's been to Burning Man thought that like it was just a rip off of Burning Man. Explain. Just like the whole character, that like hippy dippy character, the boat in the desert. That's what they do in Burning Man. They have these like boats that like ride around in the desert and like being able to like become one and meditate into that limbo space. Also, even the figurines. So they were like all those different colors. Oh. Seemed like a, yeah. So to oh. me, it was just like, oh, someone, not a rip off, but like you see this a lot. Inspiration. In, yeah. Inspiration. You see it a lot in advertising too. Like you'll go to Burning Man one year and then all of a sudden you'll see like in commercials, all these Things that resemble all like the art that you went there, but um, I thought the the point was good. I thought the point was good. Like enjoy the things that you have in life. That's it. Enjoy yeah. the moment. And, and 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 that's what I kept thinking about. Even when I was, I was like, damn, yo, I'm going into 2021 with a blank slate. That's how the main yeah. character in the movie was. Like, like what you gonna do with your second opportunity? He's like, I, I don't know. Like I'm just gonna go live. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna go out there. And Live this life thing. I just I just thought that was dope. I thought it was a I thought it was a great film. I mean, plus I mean I watched it on Christmas Day. Like, you know oh, what I mean? Shit, Listen. did I watch that and then go almost die? 
Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Holy! Sh- I think I think I watched that and then almost died. And I'm such an asshole. I didn't put that shit together at all. What if you did die? Nah, nah. Come on, bro. Stop with that. Stop with that. Bro. I mean, almost. Stop with that, bro. You said Stop. you almost died. Stop with that, bro. You. What if you was underwater? Crazy, what, if, what, if, what if you was underwater dead? I literally, I took my nose. I just breached the surface with my nose, and that's where I got my. <laughs> you didn't say that part. You didn't, you didn't tell us you snuck that goddamn show snout right up in the motherfucking air. That everybody thought it was a shark, bro. People was running out the water. It's a shark. Get out of the water. It's a shark. <laughs> Taylor, what are you trying to say? Um, I had a question about the movie. So, did. You know how he escaped from the escalator thing, like leading when they like, got zapped. And he was able to go into that new place to like, um, yeah, mentor the other people. Yeah, I didn't understand how it like how you were able to go to mentoring the little whatever they were, and then or whatever that escalating Souls. thing was. He wasn't really mentoring. He wasn't supposed to be there. That was the whole point. He wasn't supposed to be a mentor. He's, he snuck into that place. Yeah, but I just wanted to know, like, how it, how did the other mentors get there, though? Like, why wasn't he allowed to go there first? What, there but was a I bunch of mentors like, there. He was surrounded by mentors in that, in that part. That whole section was nothing but mentors. They said that. It was like, all these people are mentors. I also was, I almost didn't like the movie because... He died instantly, and I felt a type of way about it. But then I... He didn't die instantly. You know what I did like about the movie? What I thought was really cool is, and I think we're starting to see this with... I think we're starting to see this with, like, cartoons, and I think movies in general is... And this, to me, is progress. Is, like, you're starting to see movies with minority characters... That, that don't, aren't minority stories. Exact. That don't now. Yeah. It, it's not. Com, now I'm not saying we shouldn't tell minority stories. We obviously should, right? Just like we should tell like really specific uh, white stories. You know what I mean? That all these types of things we can tell if they're unique, fun stories. But like that movie, they're not stereotypical. Boom. Yeah. Like that movie, Soul. Stories. Like it could have been a white guy who was a jazz musician. Absolutely. It didn't have Absolutely. to be. Like her, his parents were at worked at like a dry cleaning place they had a dry yeah. clean but they didn't make them have like a traditional black family business whatever like that like i just thought it was such a such, uh, such a cool like moment of progress where it's like here's a person of color this movie is around them but they're uh, they're quote unquote allowed to exist in their story instead of being locked to their identity I, I love it. That's why I love black sci-fi. I love black horror. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, what, look, I don't even want to say black anything. I love horror movies with black cast, minority cast, science fiction movies with black cast. Like, I just love that shit. You know what I mean? It's just cool, um, man. Like, I, you know, we always talk about that. Like, you want to talk about equality. Well, quality is also equality of opportunity and like circumstance. And yes. part of equality is like, oh yeah, I get to be in this thing and I don't have to constantly be reminded who I am. Like there's a, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just cool to see. It's just, it's just Um, cool to see. I want to say what a fucking idiot, uh, to me, um, for trusting DC comics. I, um, and I don't watch (laughs) DC comics. What happened? What happened? I think, I think, I think DC comics suck, but over the holidays, I'm, 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 I had three weeks off. I literally had nothing to do. So I was like, you know what? HBO Max is putting out Wonder Woman 84. I'm interested to see Trash. how big budget films, you know, do on these streaming services. So um, I went back and I watched the first Wonder Woman. Okay. Y'all lied to me. Garbage. Okay. Of course the, the, it's garbage, bro. Come y'all, on. Y'all, y'all, y'all only liked Wonder Woman because DC sucks so bad that they finally gave you something halfway decent. And being that they gave you something halfway decent, you really, really enjoyed it. I hated the first Wonder Woman. Before we even get to the second Wonder Woman, you know why I hated the first Wonder Woman? Go. It's actually for the exact same reason I hated the second Wonder Woman, but let's talk about this. Wonder Karen? It's a movie of- It's Wonder Karen, bro. It's Wonder it's not, Karen, It's bro. not even that Karen she's Karen. saves the day. No, she doesn't. That's the whole point. She don't even save the day? The white man saves the day. Let's go! The me- I'm back in. The, the I'm me- back in. The mediocre white man that she falls in love with. Yup. Yup. Right? 
Y'all, he's the reason that she recognizes her full potential. Facts. He, he's the guy who ends up killing himself at the facts. end of the movie to really save the day, which makes her so, puts her in such an outrage mm-hmm. that she finally realizes who she is. Uh-huh. It's the, it's, it's, she, she, she comes from this land surrounded by all of these powerful mm-hmm. women. None of them want to tell her how powerful she nope. is. No, But Jealous. at the end, it takes, a, it takes that, the, the other God, the other white man, mm-hmm. to tell her how powerful she is. That's right. It's just like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, that's, t- what you described is low-key fire. If that's what the movie's about, then I got to watch that again because <laughs> that's my favorite movie. I didn't know that that's what it was about. This is amazing. This is the history of the world. Behind every great woman is a great white man. That's what it seemed like. I'm just and then, saying. And then, and then, Ask hey, AOC. And then, by the way, by the way, here comes part two. <laughs> in, in, in part, in, what's in, the other one? What's the other chick? Who? With the white man? Kamala. No, no. Kamala. Yeah, AOC, Kamala. Who's the other chick? Uh, out of Minnesota, I think. Her name. Serena Williams. Who? Who else? Damn, yo. The sister's going after that white dang a lang you know what I'm oh, saying? Let's go. <laughs> Listen, White boys on then, the rise. And then here comes part two. Okay, go. Part two. Uh huh. The white guy. Oh, let's go. Who killed himself in part one? Say it again. Say it again. The sacrifice the world. Mm-hmm. Jesus comes back. Jesus. Now this is what pisses me off Jesus. about the movie. They make a wish for mm-hmm. this guy's. The, Come back. Yep. This guy's spirit possesses some other guy's body. You're a Wonder Woman. Right. You're supposed to be so caring and so so hero- heroic. She's not having it, though. You don't give a fuck about the white guys whose body got taken over? No. What about don't. his family? They don't care. The what Karens about, don't care. What about Karen? They they, don't care. The Karens aren't about Karen. Okay? Let me tell you something. <laughs> Karens aren't about Karen. I'm just telling you these things are facts. Nothing we can do about it. Okay? <laughs> no, it seems like that. Yo, they didn't care about his family. Mm-hmm. They didn't care about his life. We don't even know who this guy was. Then the, then the guy that got possessed comes back at the end of the movie because the same white guy who sacrificed himself in part one yep. makes the same type of sacrifice in part two. Let's and go. here goes Wonder Woman learning more of her powers. Yep. Guess what? Guess, yo, yo. She learned to fly. Y'all should have just played R. Kelly, I Believe I Can Fly for that sequence. She learned to fly yes, she did. because once again, the white man sacrificed herself. Yes, she did. For goddamn, um, for, 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 her for, for, for her. For her greatness. Oh, the white man, man sacrificed himself for the woman. That's what we do. We are Seriously. sacrificial lambs. That's In what we do. In both of these are. Wonder Woman movies, Jesus. she does not realize her full potential or realize what she can truly do. Until mm-hmm. this white man, until makes the white a man gets sacrificed, right? That's what all look. Bible is part one. By Bi- what is it? New Testament part two, bro. Come on, man. Come on. Remember the the dude was about to sacrifice his kid. He was about to cut his kid in half or some shit. And then God was like, "Hold up, hold oh, up, yeah, hold yeah, up." Yeah. That's what we do. White men, we no, sacrifice, bro. We're no, all that was the woman. Sacrifice. The woman. No, 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 no. That was the uh, that was that story. Is a woman was this hero? In don't this. matter. You don't. You you fucking it up. It's it, you know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You don't fuck with facts, bro. Come on. You don't fuck with facts. Did you see it? Did you see Wonder Woman? Man, of course I didn't see it, man. I lived it. That's my life, bro. That's what I do, bro. That's what I do, okay? That's what I... The bird call. That's what Alex, we do. Did, did Alex see Wonder Woman? Yeah, of course I saw he it. saw Wonder Woman. Some <laughs> white girl in fucking bikini and shit. You know he gonna watch that movie. Oh, he wasn't gonna miss that one. <laughs> Amazonian. Amazonian. He said Amazonian. <laughs> What'd you think of it, Alex? Nah, the second one was trash. But you're a little hard on the first one. Nah, bro. The first one was. Tell a, me, a tell a me classic. what I'm missing about the first one. Classic film. Classic. I mean, like she didn't realize her potential because the family was hiding it from her because she knew they knew that if she gets powerful, then uh, Hades or whoever that god is is gonna come after. Oftentimes, so who, so who, so who told her how powerful she was? Let me tell I you mean, something. It was like a coming of age. Like May she I? realized. I'm it sorry. With I'm his sorry. Help. Because I'm sorry. I, we have some people who are not of the race talking about the race. Please let me let me let me do it. You have a representative <laughs> here to talk about my people. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm just saying this is what will happen. Like oftentimes, right? <laughs> you come to a white man, we will find the things inside you that you didn't even know you had. 
You didn't even know you had these things. We'll find those things and extract yeah. them and make you as great as you can be. Trust me, it's been plenty of white police officers who have pulled drugs out of black people's ass that weren't. That there. is not All true, right? Charlemagne. <laughs> that that, that, that is not there. true. We did not pull them out. We put them there in the first place. You are getting it wrong. Okay? We place the drugs. We do not take them out. <laughs> Listen, Alex, Wonder Woman was trash, bro. The first one and the second one. I don't know, man. No. You know what DC needs to focus on? DC Comics needs to focus on villains. Stop trying to tell the hero yes. stories. Y'all aren't good at that. Marvel has that sewn up. Joker, great movie. Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn, great fucking movie. Birds of Prey, Birds of Prey with Harley Quinn, great fucking movie. Now, why is it great? I'm DC. Why is it great? Keep it a buck. Why is it great? Um, I just thought it was it? good. I'm going to be honest with you. What's in it? Harley Quinn. Also, Not the, it's, it's a, also, what? The white guy in that movie, isn't it? Nah. I mean, it is, but nah. Not, not that she's a hero. Harley Quinn is a great villain. She don't give a fuck. And Rosie Perez is in it. I guess it's good. It's like it's Harley, Qu uh, Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey is a great movie. I think DC should focus on just the villain. Tell us the stories of the villain. Yes. You know why? Because you realize why the villains are the way they are from that angle. There's never enough emphasis on villains. It's always too much yeah. emphasis on heroes. One of the things that, that uh, Marvel does brilliantly is they develop both sides of the story. So DC only develops the hero. And then the villain is like a yes. big fiery monster from another planet that has yes. no purpose but destroying the planet. Well, why do you want to destroy the planet? Oh, Absolutely. Because I destroy planets. Well, why? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So there's no stakes. But if you develop both sides of the story, you develop the, the hero and the villain, all of a sudden, as the person in the audience, you got to choose. You're like, wait a minute, that villain, he might be doing the wrong That's thing, right. but for the right thing in the future. Like Thanos was so brilliant. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like when when he was devising his plan, he's like, "Look, I've seen how it goes. Like it's horrible. Everybody starves to death and dies. I'm trying to find a way where they don't." As a viewer, you start going, "Oh shit! All right, maybe this guy wants yeah. some." Thanos, Killmonger, like these Killmonger. Magneto, Magneto, yep. like all of these villains make sense. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, I just think Marvel, I think DC should just do that. Just because y'all not gonna ever get the hero thing right, bro. It's just, a, and let's just be, let's just keep it a buck. Yeah, let's keep DC it a buck. DC just got trash heroes. Yeah, it's just different versions of Superman, bro. It's Superman, water Superman, woman Superman, running fast Superman. <laughs> rich Superman. <laughs> That's all it is. And then rich Superman. That's really all it is. Also, how much fucking Batman probably paying taxes? Almost nothing, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. You know what hey, I'm he's, he's ah, Bruce Wayne is Batman, hey, bro. hey, Bruce Wayne is filing taxes under Batman. You know he is. He's writing it off. He's writing off all that technology. Writing off all the Robins. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yep. He no. bought a whole orphanage. He's writing off all them kids too. That's all he wants is dependence. Yes. You know how you got dependence, your taxes go down? Yes. That's yes. what the orphanage yes. is about. Yes. And that shit y'all doing, oh that shit y'all doing where y'all got, they bringing back like Michael Keaton, because I guess, guess in the next Flash is going to be like a multiverse. But Michael Keaton is going to be like the Nick Fury. Man, I, I ain't even seen it yet, and that shit don't even sound appealing, yo. Because at the end of the, one, the second Wonder Woman, Linda Carter just shows up out of nowhere. And Linda Carter's like, I've been here the whole time. Man, who's Linda, and winks Linda at Carter? the camera. The original Wonder Woman. The old oh. school OG Wonder Woman. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because, uh, you know, listen, we're in year 2021. 2020 was very hard. And 2021, we're going to make our dicks just as hard. And we're going to use Blue Chew to make that happen. That's right, Blue Chew. Okay, same active ingredient that's in Cialis and Viagra. But this, the Chew is going to give the woman of your dreams the night of her life. And ladies, if you're listening and you haven't been chewed out just yet, you get some chew for your man, have him chew it up, and have him deliver the dick of your life. It's blue chew. Simple as that. The best time that you will ever have in a sexual escapade. So all you have to do is go to bluechew.com and make sure you use the promo code IDIOTS with an S at the end, IDIOTS, and you are going to get trial for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. So go to bluechew.com, use that promo code IDIOTS, and have the night of your life. Now let's get back to the show. Um, thank you to all the advertisers too, man. We don't salute y'all enough. Um, you know, Brilliant Idiots has been a very prosperous podcast for a very long time. And 
But thank you to all the advertisers. Um, thank you to HelloFresh. You know, warm up this winter with fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door, contact-free. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and still enjoy high-quality veggies and proteins so you can turn those New Year resolutions into realities. With HelloFresh, getting nutritious home-cooked meals on the table have never been easier, okay? Especially with low-calorie, vegetarian, and family-friendly recipes. HelloFresh offers 23-plus weekly recipes with a range of cuisines and ingredients, but there's always something new to try. Trying to eat more sustainably this year? HelloFresh is not only the first carbon-neutral meal kit, but it also helps you reduce your food waste by at least 25% with pre-portioned ingredients, okay? If your new year is already off to a busy start, then HelloFresh's new Easy Eats options are perfect for you. From oven-ready to 10 to 20-minute meals, these quick and easy meal solutions take the prep and stress out of home cooking, all right? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Idiots10 and use code Idiots10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Idiots10, code Idiots10 for 10 free meals with free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. How much do you pay for a haircut, Shows? Uh, $100. Wow. YK Osiris says that he pays $1,000 a month in haircuts. No, nah, that's not true. And the reason he says he pays $1,000 a month in haircuts is because... Um, he says that he he gets a haircut every three days. He has his barber on call. The barber pulls up to him wherever he's at and and cuts his hair every three days. Might not he be that bad. He just gives his barber a thousand dollars a month. That might not be that bad if if he's doing that. He's got a short haircut, and also if he's paying him more. You know what I mean? Like my guy comes to the studio, so I want to pay him more. I wouldn't pay that. You give him hundred. You give a hundred dollars because if he was in the barber shop. You know, he would probably cut two or three people and make that money. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. I get that. But he you're also not getting did my hair for the Netflix special, man. I made sure that he was the stylist for the for the special. But you're not getting a haircut every three days. Not even close, bro. I haven't gotten a that haircut would be since stupid. I left. That's what I'm saying. You, you get a haircut. How, 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 how often do you get a haircut? I try to get a haircut every, um, however long it takes for this hair to go on top of my ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah that's yeah, probably yeah, like yeah, yeah, two yeah, to yeah. three weeks. So I get a haircut once a week, right? Baldy shave cost me about forty to fifty dollars. You know what I'm saying? That's with the tip and everything. Yeah. So that's like two hundred dollars a month. So there is no reason to be spending a thousand dollars a month in haircuts. Even if you are a YK Osiris and you want your barber to come to you every week, right? Yeah. If you give your barber a hundred dollars, yeah, a week, that's still only four hundred dollars a month. Yeah. But you, you why are you giving also, a barber? Why? You got to also like you're not one to speak on this issue because you have no hair. <laughs> this got still, nothing to do. I get, but it I get, I still get a haircut nothing. once a week. Yeah, but it don't no. matter. Like you could not get a haircut and nobody cares because you got no hair. But, but why can't a thousand dollars? He got a great hairline. You know? He does. He has an amazing hairline. Hair nice, line. nice hair on his head. But I'm just saying, and, and and this is what this is what pissed me off about the situation. It didn't piss me off. I I wasn't pissed off. Let me take that back. Okay. What bothered me about the situation, he does this video. Where he says he's trading in all this fleet of luck. His cars. Yes. He's getting rid of his Lambo and Rolls Royce and everything else. Love he wants it. to get a Hyundai. He's tired of fucking trying to impress people that he don't even give a fuck about, people that don't like him, yada, yada, yada. How do you go from that to, to, to flossing about $1,000 a month in haircuts? Low key? That's a smart businessman right there, bro. Explain. You could write off a haircut. You writing off that haircut, bro. That haircut is part of your business. You got to look good if you're on a gram, all these other things. He's writing off that as a business expense. That's nothing. Those cars, just a depreciating asset, burning holes in his bank account. Fuck that. It's still a waste of money, though. I mean, listen, and I tell people, I tell people, act your wage. I'm not even mad at the fact if he wants to spend $1,000 a month, I think it's a waste of money. But don't, don't, don't tell us you're not stunting anymore. Mm. Only to turn around and stunt. Yeah, that's where it's hypocritical. Don't that's go. All, that's all not, I'm saying. Yes, that's your issue. Your issue ain't even the money. Your issue is no. don't don't try to stunt. He's trying to flex by not flexing. He's doing the opposite flex. Yeah, yes. yeah. he's doing a stretch. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, stretch, he's, stretch. he's stretching. He's, a, he's not flexing. I'm stretching. So, yes. and then all of a sudden he started to flex again. You're like, ah, 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 don't be out here stretching and flexing that's at the right. same time. That's I'm right. with you, bro. Right. I don't like a hypocrite. I don't that's like. Right. One. That's all. What he's, Al? He's 22 years old. Ah, uh, good hairline haircut is yeah. very important at that age. 
Is it? Yeah. Can Every imagine? three days, Alex? So if you had the money, back, think of back when you was 20, when you had a hairline. Think back. Whoa. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> Yo, you saw that attack, bro? That was an attack. Yo, that was an attack. He said, hug a tree. He said, hug a tree, loser. That was, that was, for, that was for Wonder Woman 1. <laughs> nah, but think back to when like the cuts really meant a lot to us. If you had the money, you would have had your barber every three, every three days nah. if you could. Once no. a week, bro. Every Friday. Son, Every you, five was, days. you was wasting money on Jordans. You would have been wasting money on haircuts. Come on. Ah. No? Them Jordans, them Jordans go a lot longer. Them Jordans go a lot farther than the haircuts. Do they? Oh, first of all, shout out to Bodega. Thank you very much for giving me these. You're very kind. You're I very saw kind. that. Very kind. Very kind. No big Yo, deal. Yo, I don't know. I, listen, I don't know what the fuck we're missing. Yeah. But I'm getting mad texts and motherfuckers is like, are y'all watching this shit? Yeah. Sure. They say Trump supporters are wild. Can I share my screen, Alex? Yeah. <laughs> they said they, wow. they, got, they, they got a plane, like they hijacked a plane. And put, I just put it in the uh, dot. The shit's, <laughs> wait, they say wait, they wait, hijacked a plane to D.C. Hold on. Oh, Trump, Yo, this, oh, Trump, to, the Trump told the the followers, Capitol, bro, like Trump told his followers to go to the Capitol, and they did, and they got into the Capitol. Holy oh, shit. shit. Let me see it. Let me see it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. It's going down. This this one dude got on a fucking raccoon. This is crazy. What? what? Hold up. What? Oh. Hey, I know one thing. You let black people storm the Capitol. You let goddamn minorities storm. You let you let Latinos storm the Capitol and see what happened. Where the Look fuck? Look at this. Look at that guy. Look, show me. Where the fuck is the gunshots and the rubber bullets and the goddamn? Exactly. Where the dogs at, baby? But that's what Where's Wonder want. Woman? That's Where's Wonder not. Woman? Low key. Where the fuck, where, where the fuck is Wonder Woman? Yo, that's fucking hilarious, but low key, that's what they want. I bet you the whole thing is they start shooting American citizens. They start shooting patriots or whatever they call it. Oh, we're patriotic, even though fuck, they can't accept the, the election. Black people like, aren't patriots? Of course not. I'm not saying you're not. Obviously, there's going to be racial discrimination here. But I'm saying is the Trump administration wants their supporters to get shot so they can keep on going. See what happens when they try to fight for fair well, no, no, I don't think there's not. I don't think there's an American alive who would tell you if you storm the Capitol mm -hmm. and you get shot, I don't think they would be like, nah, they didn't deserve that. You storm the fucking Capitol, bro. What the fuck do you expect? I'm Yo, really they, I'm shocked looking. that you could just do that. I know. Is that easy to climb a wall? Yeah, like what's the what's point of building the, the wall? What? What? Like, here. I've been to the I've been to the Capitol before. I don't even know why they're scaling the wall. You Yo, don't have to scale a wall to get to the Capitol. Do you think that, like, while they're scaling the wall, they start to realize, like, oh shit, maybe that wall was a waste of money? <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> The way I'm looking at them, just climb over this wall. Yeah, yo, like, yo, somebody, somebody sent me this one. They said, on a plane from Texas to D.C., flight attendants are struggling to control a plane full of Trump supporters as they display a pro-Trump projection and harass other passengers bound for D.C. This seems too organized. How could all this happen? How could all this happen? There's no way. Well, well no, no. They, they, were, they were already on standby because today is the day that the, the, the Congress, that Congress made it official, Joe Biden is president. So that today is the day they voted on it. That's why Mike Pence told Trump, like, there's nothing I can do to overturn any of it. You know what I'm saying? So like right. they knew, they knew that they were they were on they were on deck. That's all. And is Trump leaning into it? They were on it? deck. What is he well, saying? Listen, you excited? I'm gonna be honest it. with you. you I'm gonna excited. be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My executive, the yeah. executive. Listen, yeah. listen. Yeah. Yeah. The executive producer in me. <laughs> was feeling like I was felt like Trump was going out kind of pussy, bro. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like 14 days left. Like, come on, Trump. We was talking about Yo, Civil War. Where's you Mona Scott I mean? Young when you need her? Yeah, that's all I'm saying, man. That's all I'm saying. I felt like Trump was getting a little pussy, but what I, what I noticed Trump was doing, he was waiting on his other production team. He realized that's his it. other production he realized they weren't fucking with him. That's he realized right. Mike Pence, Mitch McConnell, they all jumped off. So Trump said, fuck that. I'm going direct to consumer. We're going all dope. Right? <laughs> and, and he started putting videos on YouTube. And he told his people, go storm the fucking Capitol. Mike Pence, Mitch McConnell, them, they pussy. They ain't fucking with us no he more. He literally it's said about storm us and the, the Capitol? He said that? That's what people are texting me. 
I, I've gotten like six texts in the past oh ten minutes. They're like, he, he, he held a he held a, ri a uh, rally today. Yo, yeah. Chris. So he held a rally. I, yeah, I saw Donald Trump Jr. up there trying to be his dad. That shit was mad adorable. So he, I, didn't, I didn't know he held a rally. Yeah. Yeah, a little he Donnie Jr. He also tweeted saying something. Um, what did he he didn't actually say those words, but he was just saying, like, you know, I'm, he, he's okay with what's going on right now. Wow. wow. Listen, wow. all I, yeah, my phone is going crazy. Motherfuckers is hitting me left and right. All I know is, Black Lives Matter could not get away with that shit. <laughs> All right? Ain't no fucking way. You're not going to make me believe Black Lives Matter could get away with that shit in any way, shape, or form. Jesus of Christ. Not. There's no way in hell. I'm just looking hey, at my phone to see. All my messages are saying shit like, yo, we're meeting at the Capitol. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Where you at, yo, George? Where you at? Where you He's at, yo? Shit up right it's now. going go. down. Hey, hey, that saving America shit you was talking about? We, we doing really are, baby. <laughs> you got the mouse on the screen. Listen, hey man, guess fourteen days. I'm just fourteen days. I just want to see what's happening. That's all. Yeah. I just, I, in my mind, I was thinking that I didn't want to say it out loud. You know. But now that it's here. Now that it's here, I, you know, it's a part of me. I'm like, yo, you know, Trump, you was moving a little pussy. All right. <laughs> That's hold all. On. You want to see Donald Trump Jr. talking? Let me see. All right. Hold on. <laughs> These guys better fight for Trump because if they're not, guess what? I'm going to be in your backyard in a couple of months. <laughs> guys like Scott here. These guys. Wow. Well, I told y'all months ago. He's running. I told y'all months ago. Kid is running. I told y'all months ago. Had him goddamn guns ready. Right? <laughs> okay. I told y'all months ago that, that owning a owning a, a legal firearm in America when you're black is a form of self care. I tried to fucking tell y'all. <laughs> Not even when you're black, by the way. If you're a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And by the way, just at a time like this, honestly, if it gets too crazy, just take the Biden Harris shit down off you. You, you really know what I mean? You really think it's gonna get that crazy? I, bro, I don't know. Donald, I don't know. Donald Trump is a desperate man. They just stormed the fucking Capitol building. They're on a fucking plane with goddamn projectors, you know, making people watch movies about Trump. How they get the they projector on the plane? I don't know. There's no way, dude. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Imagine Let's you're look. on that flight. Depends how fire what their plan is. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. What if the projector <laughs> you know, slaps? You know what, what if that the slide only, shows incredible? The only thing that would piss me off about this is if I was tired on a flight. Like, bro, I don't feel like fighting right now. Oh yeah, like, you I just damn. want some sleep. Uh oh. Hey, right, let, let's. Let, let, what is this right here? What is we this? Got tale? one more. Oh, no, I saw this. This is this isn't from today. See, so you about to mix up stories. I saw this. I saw this earlier. Okay, but that this, was yesterday, I believe. Oh, yeah, that was no, yesterday no, when the Trump supporters were fighting with the police officers. Watch this. Ooh, that was a good hook, though, boy. <laughs> Opened her up, too. Stuck cut her, bro. That was a good hook, bro. Cut her. He cut her. When, when she hit him, she opened her up. She started bleeding. Wait, that was a good that one. That was Trump supporter? No, that was a black woman who was getting into it with a Trump supporter. She was. Uh, it was one black woman in the middle of a crowd with Trump supporters, and she let that goddamn hook fly. That's right. All right. Let's pay some bills and, and come back with some church her, announcements. You know who told her to throw that hook? Who? Strong white man, bro. Man, shut up. There's strong white man by her side, bro. <laughs> Let's pay some bills. Uh, all right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because we're not taking any of these bushes into 2021. All right. I'm not talking about presidents. I'm talking about pubic care. All right, we have bushes down there, and they should have been left in the 90s, but unfortunately, we're going to have to take care of them right now. And what we're going to do that with? is Manscaped, okay? And the reason why we're going to use Manscaped, I know some of you have shaved your balls before. You've shaved your pews before. You probably used some scissors. You did all that. Here's why you're going to use Manscaped. It's going to save you so much fucking time. It's unbelievable. If you got hairy balls like I do, you could be down there for a half hour or longer making sure everything is trimmed and proper because you got to use extra careful technique down there because the stakes are high, okay? You use Manscaped, you're out of there in a few minutes, Literally a few minutes, okay? Get the law, the, uh, the Manscaped 3.0 package. I'm going to read the exact one. 
than it is, but the Perfect Pack is 3.0. It is the best uh, below the waist grooming package you need to start off your year strong, okay? It comes with the Lawn Mower 3.0, waterproof, skin safe, safe trimmer to reduce the nicks to your two best friends. Those are your balls, okay? It's got the crop preserver, moisturizer, ball deodorant, all this good stuff. I'm telling you, it saves you so much fucking time. You can adjust the levels of the trim, trim the hairs in their balls, trim down their bush. It's everything goes so fast. It's not some annoying thing that you have to do because your girl's groaning about it. It's something that you do in no time. Go get it. All you have to do to get it is you go to manscaped.com and guess what? You get 20% off when you use our code idiots20, okay? And free shipping. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code idiots20 at manscaped.com. Go get your balls right. Now let's get back to the show. And I got to salute another one of our great sponsors, another one of our great advertisers, Cushy Dreams. Okay, Cushy Dreams, man. I'm all about that CBD life and Cushy Dreams offers a full lineup of premium smokable CD, CBD they specialize in extraordinary CBD rich hemp flower, aka bud, and pre roll CBD joints. Um, in order for me to get a good night's sleep, I got to do some CBD. I'm not even going to lie to you. I have to, man. Um, CBD has a lot of health benefits without the high of THC. Uh, even though I don't mind the high of THC, but it, it's, it's weed that ships directly to you and it's legal in all 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. Looks like high quality marijuana, feels like high quality marijuana, and tastes like high quality marijuana. The beauty of this is a lot of people have oral fixations, and it's not even that they're addicted to the tobacco. They're actually addicted to just having something in their mouth, smoking it, whatever, whatever. This is why CBD is good. It's 100% hand trimmed, never machine trimmed. Each batch is slow cured for two to four weeks to guarantee maximum freshness and preserve flavor and cannabinoids. Best of all, is grown in the USA. Cushy Dreams has CBD flour in pre roll joints. They come in specific indica sativa blends like energy, hustle, relax, and dream. Go to cushydreams.com. That's K-U-S-H-Y. Get some high quality CBD bud. At checkout, use promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order. Oak your CBD. The announcements are a very important part of what we do in church. All right, we back. Uh, Andrew, you got any church announcements? I 2021, do. you back on the road yet? Dude, uh, whoa. Yes, 2021, we're going to do it. I'll, I'll announce that soon. We still are organizing that. But um, I do want to make an announcement. Uh, uh, the guy who uh, co-created the uh, Netflix series with me, um, and he uh, co-wrote it, Mark Gagnon. You know him from Flagrant. If you've listened to Flagrant 2, uh, he opens up for me on the road. So maybe you see uh, his, his niece in very tragic story. His niece got hit by a car. And, oh uh, man! Yeah, like dragged by the car underneath it. And oh, uh, she alive? She is alive, but she's in the hospital. Thank God. And um, so you know, they they did a GoFundMe to raise money because it's not going to be one of those things where you know you're just in and out of the hospital. She'll probably have to be in and out of the hospital for for a while. And um, so I put uh, I'm going to put the GoFundMe in the link for this. We'll put it in the link for the YouTube video. So I know everybody's stressed for money right now, and uh. But if you do, if you can, you know, find the kindness to to help out, that would be absolutely amazing. We just want to make sure that they're uh, taken care of uh, in this tough time. So uh, we'll put the link in there for the GoFundMe. Man. And uh, thank you guys so much for your support, uh, if you if you can. But we understand it. it's just, it's a tough time. Salute to Mark. And um, this is a perfect time since after what we just talked about with the Trump stuff. Perfect time to plug Tamika Mallory's book, which is available for presale. Mm. Uh, it's, it's called State of Emergency. You know what I'm saying? It's called State of Emergency, uh, how we win in uh, the country that we built. And it's available for pre-order, wherever you buy books. You know, it's out uh, May 11th of this year. So pre-order, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, Target, uh, wherever you buy books, that's available through Black Privilege, Shaman & Schuster Publishing. So go support Tamika Mallory. Now, uh, I want to talk about, I want to do this quick deep dive real quick. Um, I don't even know if it's going to be a deep dive. We're just going to jump in the water. I don't know how deep this water is. Last night, we were on a group chat. And, you know, it came through that um, Dr. Dre had a brain aneurysm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Something I wouldn't wish on anybody. Um, I, I, I have definitely suffered from headaches and went to the doctor and had an MRI just to make sure. Because, you know, you hear these stories about brain aneurysms and they, they hit you so suddenly, unexpectedly. There's not really any symptoms except for severe headaches. And, you know, that stuff is scary. And I'm not going to say who in the group chat. I'm just going to say it's a group chat full of women. And myself and Wax. And, um, oh, that sounds fun. 
one of the women said that it was karma. Whoa. Um, or I guess, you know, uh, you know, the, the allegations that he's put his hands on women, you know, throughout in, in his life. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say she retracted it after I didn't lose it. I just thought that it is very irresponsible, immature, and illogical to say that health issues are karma. Right. Brain, a brain aneurysm can happen to anybody. So I said to them, so if your grandma has a heart attack tomorrow That's karma. and dies, was it her karma? You know what I'm saying? If your mom, God forbid, has a brain aneurysm and dies, is it karma? You know what I mean? Like, you can't say that somebody's health issue is karma. Health issues don't discriminate. Like, Harriet Tubman died of pneumonia at 90-something years old. Is that mm -hmm. karma? Like, what are we talking about here? Like, when do we, when do we, when do we stop this, this karma thing? Quincy Jones has had two brain aneurysms and survived. Mm. Is that karma? Mm. I think I read a statistic where it's like 17 million people a year die of heart attacks. Is that karma? What about kids that are born with illnesses that they can't do anything about? Is that karma? Like, you can't, you got to be very careful the way we throw certain things around. And, um, you know, I even saw people tweeting Things like that. That's how the conversation started, actually. The person shared a tweet. And the, the tweet was like, all the women that Dr. Dre put hands on rejoicing over his karma. Yo, health issues are not karma. Mm. It's just not. I could be wrong. What do you think, Show? I agree with you. Yeah, I think that um, not everything happens for a reason. But you can find a reason in everything. So I don't think he got a brain aneurysm because he allegedly beat women. But I think he can look at this moment and he can go, oh, wow, maybe there are these certain unhealthy things I was doing in my life that could have caused this. Or maybe I need to go to the doctor more and check, you know, and check myself out, et cetera. So I think you can always learn something from everything that happens. But this idea that like everything that happens in our lives is like predisposed. It's like, nah, everything that happens in your life is a lesson. But it, it, something that I, I agree with that. Something that's good that happens to you ain't all uh, like that's not necessarily karma either. You know what I mean? Like that might be some luck. It, that might be some hard work. That might be a whole, yeah. you know, cornucopia of things that help created that outcome. Because it's good karma and it's bad karma. But also right. too, it's like also things that happen to you aren't always some spiritual karmic reason. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You might get into a car accident simply because somebody wasn't paying attention. Right. Because somebody, somebody was somebody was texting and driving. Right. You know what I mean? Or yeah. somebody you might have been drinking and driving and got into a car accident. Like. Those are the reasons. When you say everything happens for a reason, yeah, because you was drunk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, because you was looking down at your phone texting. Yeah. Like, there's there's always reasons, and they're not always some spiritual, you know, karmic thing. Exactly. That we can't see. You know, I, there are tangible but, yeah. things that you're doing in your life that cause things to happen. And that's the thing. It's like, we all need explanation for the world, man. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard for us to exist in a world without explanation. It's really hard for us to see events of catastrophic proportions happen and go, well, why did this happen? Oh, because life yes. is frivolous. I don't want to believe that. I'd much rather yes. believe that it happens because either God wanted to happen or karma or this. Like it's terrifying to go through life accepting that anything could happen to all of us. That's fucking terrifying. bro. And, 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 what you're saying is so true. And what also is crazy that we have um, images of, of, of our heroes in our head, right? Are these images of these, these rich, successful people in our head. And for whatever reason, we think they're exempt from everyday human life. Yes, Dr. Dre is a superhero in the world of music. Yes, Dr. Dre is a superhero in the world of business. But guess what? He's still a human. And guess what happens to humans? Humans get brain aneurysms. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and Dr. Dre just sadly happens to be one of the 200,000 people who get brain aneurysms every year. Right. I read it. I read the statistic. It's 200,000. I told you, I, had to, I used to go get MRIs thinking I had brain aneurysms. They actually say brain aneurysms are pretty, pretty rare, mm. but it's 200,000, 200,000 people get them roughly a year mm. in America. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's one of the people who got one. Yeah. The human being. I know he's Dr. Dre, but at the end of the day, he's Andre Young. He got a social security number just like you, mm -hmm. bleeds just like you. 
He's got a heart and lungs and liver just like you. He's a human. Those things happen to humans. I bet he don't pay taxes like me and you, though. I bet he's yeah. in a different bracket, bro. I bet he's in a different bracket, bro. Yeah. yeah. I bet he's in a do. different bracket. Yeah. That he yeah. doesn't do. I Either. bet he was paying so little taxes, he got a brain aneurysm. He couldn't believe how much he was saving. Yeah, that he doesn't do. And, you know, Taylor Taylor, Taylor was agreeing. You know what I'm saying? She was agreeing with the karma statement. Um, I definitely was not. Taylor, Taylor, not Taylor, Taylor your, your mic, everybody, sorry, sorry. your mic is so much louder than everybody else. So if you say something, you got to be way far removed and then okay. be quiet. Tell Charlie to stop triggering me then. Take off the, first of all, me. take the Philly fan filter off your mic. You fucking loud ass Philly fan. Start cheering for the Eagles and the goddamn Sixes, and you're the loudest person in the room. All right. <laughs> you did say you agree with not, the karma. No, I didn't. I just said that it depends on their past of what makes karma. You know what I did to shut that up, Schultz? What's that? I sent her an article of this white woman who a white principal who got fired because she said Kobe Bryant's helicopter crash was karma oh because he had God. that sexual assault that charge nice. back in the day you know what taylor's response was yeah. i want to fight her no don't fight her you're just like her oh wow taylor. Oh, that was disrespectful. it's disrespectful to say anybody's health issue or death I is didn't, karma, wait, wait, especially wait. when it's an you accident mean? it was an accident Trump, that was a helicopter I accident Trump, I, mean. I didn't say that though why are you keep saying I said the health thing? I just said depends on someone's past what makes what is karma. And I didn't say him. I'm just saying in general. What do you mean when you say somebody? I mean, in the context of talking about the Dr. Dre brain aneurysm thing, what did you mean? I didn't think that that was his karma. I said his karma was probably him having to give back all his money to his wife, whatever like that. That would be the karma, not the health. No, that's not karma either. That's just a woman being greedy. <laughs> that's just a, that's all that's, that's all that is you know what i mean there's nothing that's it that's it all right let's, let's get into some shit you won't care about next week um biblical fox calls young thug a sexy cockroach call him sexy I yeah i don't have a problem with that and the reason i don't have a problem with that is because none of y'all there's nobody in this room who's ever seen a cockroach's face cockroaches might be cute bro we don't. We, we've never been. We've never been eye to eye with cockroaches to know if cockroaches are handsome or not. When have you ever? Have you ever seen a cockroach's face, Andrew Schultz? No. Really. You see them and you step on them from the top. Yeah. All you see is that shiny brown shell. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked in a cockroach's face to see if a cockroach is cute and handsome or not? No. No. Exactly. Yeah. Google cockroach faces. That might be your new favorite pastime. Mm. You know what's interesting? You just don't know. It's like how little we care about insects lives like i think we care more about plants lives than insects like if some kid was just ripping flowers out of the ground you'd be like yo what are you doing like that's fucked up like leave that alone if they're just chopping down trees you chop down trees in the amazon we're just like hey we need that for oxygen this that the other if you see any insect it is perfectly reasonable to just step on it with your foot or squash it or do anything we treat Bugs, mm -hmm. the way white people treat black trespassers. I knew you okay. were going to go here with this. I knew you it. have no I reason. Just knew it. <laughs> you I have, just knew it. <laughs> you have no reason to be here, and you, you j just your mere presence in this house uh, dictates me to take your life. <laughs> Say it, Andrew. Say all saying, bugs matter. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Say all bugs matter. <laughs> Say it. I know you want to let it. Flies matter, Charlemagne. <laughs> oh man, this guy is so oh, crazy. God. Um, what else? I think that's. I think, let's, yeah, do let's do some asking idiots. Let's do asking idiot and get. But up we out need of here. you to speak very quietly, Taylor. Yeah, let's do asking idiot and get up out of here. Wait, you guys are missing. Uh, you didn't want to talk about anything else. What else is there? Like what? I mean, about um, the you didn't think about the weekend and his music video, how he changed his face. No? But he didn't, didn't really like change his face. That's not what yeah, he really looks like now, right? That's all prosthetics and shit. I guess he looks like Ari Fletcher's uh, brother to me. No, he don't. Yeah, that's that. That's that's that jigsaw Snapchat filter. That's that goddamn. Uh, what's that? What's that character in Saw Jigsaw? Right. 
That's that jigsaw Snapchat filter. By the way, I saw that and I'm 42 years old, bro. I grew up in the Michael Jackson era. Like, <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not really, really a face change. Did he do it or did he not do it? I don't know. I don't think he, I don't think so. But the, he was wearing that thing around his face. So I guess it was all just publicity sent. So. I mean, I love oh, the long game. My how he God. Did exactly. <laughs> like, we don't know what's going on here. <laughs> like, this is all theater. It's theater. It's performative. Yeah. I got to do better, man. I, 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 I got to really start fucking with people. I'm not fucking with people enough because people fall for anything nowadays, bro. Yeah. Maybe that can be your 2021 goal. Just to fuck with people and Just see how it goes, fucking right? fuck with people, bro. Just fuck with people. Fuck this truth shit. Yeah, why this you gotta time. tell the truth all the time, bro? I got time for that shit, yo. Yeah. Just give, feed people what they want. But once again, I grew up in the Michael Jackson era, so this ain't really a face change to me. Like, eh, mm-hmm. I've seen mm-hmm. worse. Mm-hmm. Do you care about um, Bobby Smyrta? Um, Bobby Smyrta be home Black February 23rd, history. allegedly. Hey, Black History that's, Month, that's, let's go. That, that's dope as she does. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eminem. Oh, you know what? Shit, you won't care about next week. Oh, Eminem. Snoop Eminem. Eminem think? gotta stop. Eminem gotta stop, bro. Why? What's Eminem up? gotta stop. What's happening? Because Eminem. Eminem, bro. You. Eminem has been the bully in hip hop for so long. Mm-hmm. He's always said what he wanted to say about people. He had some of the craziest lyrics in regards to people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when somebody says you're not on my top ten list. You get upset and say you didn't like the person's tone. Their fucking tone. Eminem, have you heard your tone over the years? Yeah. Stop it, man. I don't like people like that, yo. It's like, yo, if you're gonna be the bully, be the bully. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because I don't like yeah. people, I don't like, I don't like when I don't like when it's no like it's no fun when the rabbit got the gun, right? Not saying Snoop is not a rabbit at all. Snoop is Snoop Dogg. All I'm simply saying is, Eminem, you've given it to people hard. Over the years, all Snoop said was, you're, you're, you, you're objectively, you deserve to be on people's top 10 list because of your, your work with Dr. Dre, but you're just not on his. So what? He said that your music is music that he can live without. So what? <laughs> like, yeah. And by the way, that's been the general consensus of Eminem for a long time, especially in the circles I run in. Yeah. I acknowledge Eminem as a dope lyricist, a phenomenal lyricist. He's great. But I don't relate to his music. Yeah. I'm not taking that Eminem and saying, put that while we on the boat in Cabo. Yeah. I'm not at the house, you know what I'm saying, saying throw that Eminem on. I'm not in the car like throw that Eminem on. That's not a diss to M. Yeah. The guy is one of the biggest rappers of all time. I just don't rock with it. I appreciate him for the things he's done with hip hop. I like how he helped Dr. Dre get his, bring his career back to prominence. I love him introducing the world to 50 Cent and G-Unit. The D12 stuff, all of that. But come on, bro. Stop being so sensitive. You're Eminem. You're M fucking M, bro. Mm. You can't be that way. You can't, yeah. you can't, you can't dish it all of these years. And then when somebody gives it to you, you're not taking it. Bro. Nah, the sensitive, that. tough guys. Man. Are the worst. I don't like that. But that's man. low key, all rappers. Like, I don't really know any rapper who's not sensitive. Like, they're always crying about something. Somebody said this about me, and this person made this joke. Like, Duval will even tell you. He's like, yo, rappers are the most sensitive. If I post one thing about them, they're fucking crying, texting, all this type of shit. So I think it's because, like, at the end of the day, rappers are artists, and artists are usually pretty sensitive. I hate that with comedians, too, and comedians get all sensitive about shit. Oh, my God. Like, come on, That's why I be, that's why I be, that's why, that's why I don't, that's why that, that's why hating ass Ashy Larry is annoying. Yeah. It's like, yo, you, you can't be a comedian and be sensitive, yo. Like, yo, let them jokes fly and do your thing. Because as soon as, cause if, uh, uh, listen, I, I be sparing that brother because I know he's sensitive. I'm saying now if he, when he calls me and texts me, I give him that real shit. In public, I don't because I know he's sensitive and I don't want to hurt his family. That's all. <laughs> and I don't want people to look at him funny. Yeah, if yo, for, Full anarchy going on in DC right Still going now. Going down, yo. They, they breaking windows. The they fighting boys. police. They taking doors off the hinges. Wow, it's going down. Wow. If it was Black Lives Matter, all of us would have been dead by now. Oh, you, you Black Lives Matter now? I'm just saying. I'm part. I am with Black Lives Matter. Never so seen I'm you at a protest. Whoa. I will, I've been at a protest. Don't do that. Liar. Where's the Instagram picture? Stop triggering me because I'm just going to sound you, you're, loud. You're trying to tell me that you. <laughs> Post about everything, but you didn't post about being at the Black Lives Matter protest. I did. Where's the picture? Show me. 
Okay, I'll show you. Put it up on the screen. Put it up on the screen. All right. I need to see you at a BLM protest. I've never heard this in my life. Okay. You've never said this. And Meek Mill contracts don't count. When Meek Mill was locked up, if you was out there in front of that jailhouse singing the intro, that don't count. <laughs> don't, don't, don't show us that. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, wait. I gotta show Put it up on the first. screen. I want to see. I am. And then we do some Hold on, hold on. I have to change my filter. Nah, you don't really. Shut up. Okay. Black Lives Matter. So. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. That's goddamn bike week somewhere. That's a bike. <laughs> I get, if you don't get the fuck out of here. Post it's it again. Post it again. <laughs> post, post it again. I'm going to post it again. I'm going to post it again. Beach post Black again. Bike Weekend when I see it. That's <laughs> Hampton. Hey, that's Hampton's homecoming. No, it's not. You got to get off, Taylor. Post Get out of here. Get, yo, I can't believe you. Yo, yo, that's why she gave us a little peek and then pulled it away. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, that's... Where is that? Hampton Homecoming. No, it's at um, the Barclay Center. Oh, uh, okay. Give me some like, you just went to one? You just went to one? <laughs> you just went to one? Yeah, because yeah, nice they were a little hectic. Yeah, you just went to I one. That's it? <laughs> Oh you know what I'm saying? Your boy was out I'm here. Like Your boy was out here at the Black Lives Matter marches, yo. Give us some Can I, wait, 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 I just have two more. Two more. Pictures? Um, because um, I don't know for myself. Are we okay with Nancy Pelosi winning re-election? She always going to win re-election. They do that specifically. She never leave in government until she wants to. I don't even think nobody ran against her. They <laughs> don't, bro. It's, it's a whole anybody thing anybody run against her? I don't even know how that works. I don't know. They put her in a district um, where she can't lose, then, man. Come on. And then Hakeem oh, Jeffries is going to run for that seat one that, that for speaker of the house one day once Nancy Pelosi retires or and passes away. I don't know how that works. Mm. What and else then, we got, Taylor? Are you cool with uh Bieber studying to be a minister for the Hillsong Church? He said that's not no. true. Oh. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. He said that's not true. <laughs> Yo, he said, oh, okay. he posted, Islam he is the said, way, bro. True. Islam and then is one more. Bieber. I like People Justin Bieber. Man. I, I really, Justin. I, Justin Bieber. Justin's a great guy, man. Yo, Justin is a good white guy. Justin got the Netflix special made. I know. Have you ever told that story? Mm. I don't know, but Justin was showing um, Scooter, his manager. <laughs> my stuff and he's like yo Justin's been a big supporter of mine and he's been like he's like yo you gotta see this kid and Scooter was like oh this is great we started talking and then we are like yeah let's make it happen and then Scooter got that now, done over at Netflix now, Justin's a good guy I, I, I'm not going front man this guy's like um, Justin you know who else intrigues me who was that Kennedy the Kennedys and and all of their like the Shrivers like Maria and him Shriver you wanna talk about some bad luck Bro, holy shit! That family is riddled with it. Riddled. Is it, or is it, is, or is it just life? Bad luck. You know what I mean? Because I could put, put it like I—I I, I tell you why I say that. Look at somebody like Diddy, mm. and all of the things that have happened around Diddy. Mm. I, I mean, both of those—you know, both Diddy and the, the Shrivers Kennedys—they're wealthy mm. beyond belief. You know what I'm saying? I just think sometimes it's life, man. You know how you know the, what I mean? You know how the like, Kennedys made that money, though, bro. Uh-uh. You don't know how they made their money, man? Uh-uh. Come on, bro. Bootlegging, dog. How all the American families make all their money doing some illegal shit. What's wrong with bootlegging? It was illegal. Alcohol was illegal at the time. What do you mean? New York City's prime source of commerce is bootlegging. Yo, this is back during Prohibition. Chris knows about it. Chris. Just too loud. Uh, Just step away from the mic a little bit. You should be good. What's wrong? Yo, you don't even, you're not yeah, even true story. hot. You're not even go. hot if people are not bootlegging your Go, go, shit, go, 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 Tris. Tris talk true that story. The, the, the grandfather, Joseph Kennedy, he ran uh, rum from Maine to the East Coast. He got all his money illegally. True story. Gangster, though. He's uh, like Joe is a real bootlegging? gangster. What yeah. was he selling? Alcohol. He was selling alcohol. It was illegal. That's how he uh, made all his money. Come on. I'm from the country, bro. Like, my daddy has had an illegal juke joint. His whole goddamn life. <laughs> right? Right? What the fuck is Who gives a fuck about a liquor license? You know what I mean? I got time for that shit, man. You know what I mean? You got to get this fucking money. You ain't never bought uh, liquor from the moonshine lady? 
Matt, you, when you underage, where you think you're buying liquor from? I just think it's they, funny. I just think it's funny that, like, you see these people, they're like, criticize the Jay-Z's of the world and shit like that. They're like, oh, my God, how could this gangster go end up being like a, a, a this drug dealer end up being like a, a, yeah. a respectable citizen? It's like, yo, why don't you look at all the libraries and all the colleges that you go to and see they're all named after motherfuckers' families who used to either sell opium to China, sell alcohol when it was illegal. It's like, that's how low key you want to enter that billionaire class? Or sell black people. We didn't have to say that, bro. Like, why we had to go there? Why we got to go all the way over there, bro? You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, he really, they, well, no, that was legal back, back in the day. Selling black people was legal. That was that was that was legal. I'm just saying um, it's 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 a fine line. It's a fine line. Like when these, I'm not saying that you can't make it in other ways. There are plenty of people who made it in other ways. You can make it legit, but there are plenty of people who put on these airs of uh, austerity the elites if you will yeah. and they came from the streets just like everybody else doing the most grimy shit to get on a lot of gatsby's out there is that yeah, fair I mean, to I, say I, chris or am i being cynical no uh, sure i mean the the biggest example right now is the sackler family oh yeah um, oh huge if, yeah i mean you go to carnegie hall you go anywhere around new york city you're going to see you know sackler on the side of the buildings but they're the family probably most responsible for the opioid epidemic in America. They were selling really? fentanyl, right? Fentanyl is their drug? Oxycontin was their, you know, I think the actual company name was Purdue. They they put it under a company name, Purdue. Well, well, let me ask a question. If 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 they're putting it on the market for the right reasons, but people are using it for the wrong reasons, is it their fault? Well, what what happened was that's that's the argument they've made. What the investigations have found is that behind the scenes, they were pushing doctors to over prescribe it. And they were also kind of playing with the stats and, and claiming it was non addictive when, in fact, as we now know now, it's incredibly addictive. So mm. they were this, playing both sides of the coin. There's this Indian dude that 60 Minutes did a, uh, a whole like expose on him. There's this Indian doctor who. I don't know if he created fentanyl, or like was part of like the owner of the company that was putting it out. And essentially, I think he's being put to jail for like three to 10 years. He should be shot in his forehead. But he basically had this whole rap where he would pay doctors to do these speeches, right? At these conferences. That's right. Because you can't pay a doctor directly to, to um, prescribe a drug to somebody, but you can put them on these speaking tours where they're getting 50,000, 30,000, whatever it is, and they know how to keep themselves on those speaking tours, and that's by prescribing the fentanyl to these patients. And then what he would do is he'd keep a list of how much they were prescribing to each patient and then email all the doctors like, yo, he was on 10 milligrams, now you need to bump him up to 20. Now you need to bump, they were creating addicts and creating uh, these people who would overdose, and then when they can't get any more fentanyl, they go to heroin and all this other shit. I mean, it's just it's disgusting, bro. That motherfucker I just, is I just, disgusting. You want to talk about karma? I just want, I just want the record to show that um, I was just going to give white people props and talk about how I like Justin Bieber and the Kennedys that and guy's the Shrivers Indian. That guy's me. Indian. That's not on us. <laughs> and the Kennedy and the Shrivers intrigue me because they're like genuinely good white people who mm -hmm. always seem to care about others even though they're elite and mm -hmm. y'all just spent five minutes shitting on white people yo all i gotta say is you know you might be giving <laughs> back and doing all that philanthropy because you making up for some fuck shit i don't know i just don't if listen, you know I think how America, your family made the bread you don't think you feel a little bit guilty about it you live shows, in this lavish life every every single one of us have done something crooked bro to my get parents to where we are sold Whether, salsa lessons Illegally, they have a license. <laughs> they have, was that studio? Did that stu hey, listen, was that studio a licensed studio? Was that a legitimate business, or did your mom just know how to dance? So she decided nah. to make some. Extra you want to know the? You want to know the takeaway from this shit? My mom would always tell me this, man, and we're so fucking lucky. Like. She'd be like, you go out to these shows, you make people laugh. You're so fortunate. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I'm so lucky. I got the best job in the world. She goes, no, 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 like. For a living, you get to do something that makes people feel good and is ethical. There's a lot of people out there that they're like insurance agents and they got to go show up to your, you know, you, when your house gets flooded and go, ah, it was your fault. You got to pay for it. Sorry. Like they, it's not, it's not that they're bad people, but they're 
to make a living, forced to do this thing that probably makes them feel bad. Like, how lucky are we? We get to do this. And the people listen, they enjoy, they laugh. Like, sometimes they get angry, but they feel good th- feel- feelings, man. It's, uh, well, what about cool. the people you hurt? They what? Do comedy as well. Fuck them. They could die. See, oh my God. All right. <laughs> hey, listen, listen uh, I know they wilding in D.C. right now. Nah, they allowed little, to do that. Little Duval texted me. Duval texted me and said, what is that? they wilding in D.C. Let's go. Duval said you wilding. <laughs> Living my best life. <laughs> how, they said, um, on my, I'm sorry, my son, they said that um, they asked for like, or should we call the guards and everything else? And they're like, nah, like, they're good. Da, da, da. Get the fuck out of here, y'all. I'm telling you, bro, if that was Black Lives Matter, it would be no way we'll be in. We dead. We will be dead. Can you give us some... Well, you, at- you wouldn't be dead, Taylor, because you wouldn't be there, You obviously. wouldn't be there. Taylor, give us... Give us you would <laughs> skip that shit. Give us some asking idiots, Taylor, so we can get out of here, please. Because I right. want to go see this good-ass fucking production no. on TV. <laughs> it's oh popping on YouTube so, right now. YouTube is cracking. <laughs> really? So, oh, and... Um, it's underscore Lynn, not underscore Lynn, wants to know how hard is it to ignore the people who feel like you owe them something when you put in the hard work to get where you are in life? How hard is it to ignore them? Yeah, like owed you something. Like who thinks? Yes. Yeah. But like, who are you talking about? Who's saying that? Uh, Hello, Taylor. Who's saying like that that they're owed? Um, I don't know. Just people, I guess, in your like in your past, whatever. Nah, I, think. I don't, I don't have asking. nobody. I don't have nobody telling me I owed him anything. Because guess what? I don't owe a motherfucker shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what got, I'm you I only owe my parents, bro. That's it. Just my parents. But you guys never felt like the maybe like bitterness of someone that you thought was your friend or not, and like y'all not friends no more. What do you mean? Just like because it sounds like two different things. Know. Like I don't. It sounds like somebody owes oh, somebody well, money, I... bro. That's what really sounds like is happening over here. And that guy who asked the question should pay that money back. <laughs> That's really what it okay. is. Okay. Well, next question. Um, Ken West 91 says, why the fuck do people have a hard time understanding white culture is European culture and American culture is still being created? That is a mixture of everyone else. It's not appropriating. It's appreciating. Well, let me defer to the white guy on the show for this one. Okay. (laughs) So white culture is European culture. Um, well, I think, yeah, I think American culture is, is unique in that, it does have influence from all these other parts. Like how much a cowboy culture has been influenced by like Mexican or native American culture, you know, like, I, I mean, I, the cuisine, I mean, I, I'm sure. Yeah. I think he's saying it in a weird way, but ideally I would love everybody as part of the fabric of America to feel entitled to everything that comes out of America. And we could recognize that certain groups might have developed this thing, but we can also go, Hey, this is, for all of us because we're all a part of it. And I think you guys have to speak to this, but I think when everybody feels equally a part of it, then I think they'll feel like we could share. But when you don't feel like you're getting what's due to you, it's harder for you to share with other people. Is that close? Yeah. It's never going to happen though. And the reason it's never going to happen because the one thing that America uh, um, has um, that I think is different and unique is, is capitalism. So, you know, black people, even though we do have a lot of the shared same experiences, you'll have black people who aren't in certain financial positions who will say, y'all don't understand. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing with white people. You know, like even though we we think white people have this certain level of privilege, there's always people that are way more privileged and way more elite. You know what I'm saying? Than, than, Than the average white person that's just walking around in this country. So I don't think it'll ever, I don't think we'll ever be on equal playing fields in, 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 yeah, in this country. Yeah, nah, you're right. I, it, maybe we won't feel like we're on equal playing fields, but like, maybe we'll just get closer to a moment where we could feel like we could share in each other's traditions and each other's contributions. That would be really dope. That would be cool for all of us all to just look at 
different art forms and be like, yeah, this is an American thing. Like to look at stand up yeah. comedy and be like, no, stand up comedy wasn't created by whoever the fuck created it. I'm sure you can go back to like Greece with it, but maybe who pioneered stand up? Uh, who knows, right? Maybe it's some Jews in the Catskill Mountains. Maybe it's uh, whoever knows. We could look into the history books and see. But it'd be cool for us to just go, no, nah, stand up comedy is an American art form. Like, we made that here in America and we all contributed to it. White people, black people, everybody. And that's why it's so fucking dope. And that's why our stand-up comedy is the best because it comes from the most unique experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when you do realize, it's going to sound fucked up, but you know when you do, and I'm not, this, this clearly doesn't happen everywhere, but you do feel that a lot of times when you, when you go out the country and you go to places where it's like money being spent, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're on these exclusive resorts or on these exclusive properties or on these exclusive places where it's just people with money. Mm. It seems like it's a, a, a different sense of equality because people will, you'll speak Bro. to each other. Everybody knows they're there because they're in a certain tax bracket. And if they're not in a certain tax bracket, they're there with somebody in a certain tax bracket. You know what I mean? Yo, dude, what is it's a different sense of equality, but it's also the it's also how inequality happens organically. I had this exact thought. I'm at this fancy resort, obviously, in in uh, Hawaii, in the island of Lanai. It was absolutely beautiful. And because of how expensive it is, the barrier to entry is very high. So anybody going there can is probably doing pretty well or they got their money handed down to them, right? But because of what you said, everybody in there is willing to talk to you because you're not someone who's trying to get something out of them. You're someone who also is probably quite successful and they might want to get something out of you or mm, it's a mutual exactly. contribution to what is going on. Exactly. So everybody's looking at you in an even playing field. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and you want to so, know who's who. And you might want to know who's who, but what happens is you start talking to these people, right? Who are successful in their field. And they start sharing information with you because that's what people do. We share information with each other. And now, information of successful people is being transferred back and forth. And when that happens, do you know how many investment opportunities come out of that? How many deals come out of that? Yeah, the rich yep. keep getting richer, but it's yep. not by some nefarious plot to keep poor people down. It's literally just by hanging out with other That's successful it. rich people. That's and it. I was like, oh, fuck, this is how rich people get richer. And the poor people don't because poor people aren't given these opportunities. And I kept thinking, I was like, how do you put poor people in these situations so they could also benefit from something like this? But that's access. That's access. And, yeah. and it's a different level of access. That's too, financial man. access. You're yeah, not gonna, we, you're not going to put a poor person at a Four Seasons resort somewhere because they're they poor. can't afford to be there. Exactly. So it's like yeah. it's this restrictive thing, and it's um yeah, it made me really excited when I was having the conversations. But a little part of me was bummed because I was like, man, there's so many people that aren't gonna be able to have this. And then this is just to wrap it up. I go, holy shit, how amazing our podcast! For the first time in history, the poor person has access to the most brilliant business minds, intellectual minds in the world through all these podcasts. These that's, conversations, that's just everything. Podcast, that, YouTube, social media, books, all of it. All that kind of stuff. You yeah, would yeah, never yeah, yeah. have access, but now, or you'd have to read maybe their book. You wouldn't even know who they are, but now you have the most access in history. So maybe there it is. Maybe that's how a spark can get lit and somebody who's a little bit less fortunate financially and they can, you know, crack it up. Come it with them. Nope. That's when, you know, you just hope somebody who's, you know, not doing well, less fortunate can just end up where the money resides, 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 where the money resides. I don't so like, know. First of all, so if you're a way off beat, you were- <laughs> First of all, don't you disrespect that white man, okay? <laughs> all right. Who is that? Because you, you, ju- you would be judgmental if he was on beat, you'd be surprised. If he's off beat, you can't act surprised too, Taylor Swift. <laughs> but who okay. is that? Well- <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it, right? Okay, one last thing with all this shit going on. Um, Pavada one wants to know what the fuck is gonna go on with our or what the fuck is going on with our country and how can we fix it? And first of all, that that, that question is too multi <laughs> Right. It's so it's so many things wrong with the system of America. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just it's, that's that's too much of a multi layered question. You know can we I fix mean? it? Can we fix America? Honestly. Honestly, I, I, I don't, yes. I don't know because, yes. 
I don't know. Yes. I, I mean, the only reason I say I don't know because I don't know if it's um, put it like this: it's 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 broken, but it's also working for the people who designed it. So it's working perfectly okay for the people who designed it. You know what I mean? Yo, it's you know, broken it's, for, and it's you, all, you know how like it's broken for a lot of other people. You know how everybody in America, like you know how everybody listening to this podcast earlier was hearing us complain about like our tax bracket and shit. And like what we got to pay in taxes. That's how the world feels when Americans complain about America. That's that's where the people they're like, wait, what? That's what, they, what? Those are, you say those America's are, those broken. People. They just locked up the richest man in China. The Jack Ma is locked up. We maybe he's murdered. Maybe he's gone. Nobody knows. He was the richest man in China. They said yeah, adios, the, the, sayonara. Yeah, but, but but those are people who don't oh, yeah, understand man. the inside out of America in a real way. You know what I mean? Because and and by the way, we're speaking from a place of absolute privilege. We're speaking from a place of absolute being good financially. You know what I mean? I tell people all the time, just 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 come to any poor community, bro. Whether You'll it's see. the hood, whether it's a rural area in the south, full of white people, like nah, man. <laughs> like the gap between the haves and the have-nots in big. America is 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 really big, and it's all the way fucked up. And I just think that. Honestly, man, we got to come to the table and rebuild because the country was built on this thing called white supremacy. It, it was mm. it was built from a place of bigotry, whether it's business, whether you call it business or whatever it was. It was not an all inclusive thing. I say this all the time. America advertises itself as an all inclusive resort, but it's not. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? I mean, it's really I for the elite. I don't even think it's, it advertises itself as that. All inclusive means you get everything once you come here. America's like, nah, you gotta work for this. And even if you work for it, that shit might be tricky too. Let me ask you a question. That resort you stayed at in Hawaii, would you yeah. stay there if you saw every single motherfucker being allowed in? What if you saw what? If you saw every single motherfucker being allowed in. Oh, if you saw anybody allowed there? Yeah, just, just people being allowed to come in. <laughs> like, would you stay have stayed there? It's not what I paid for. Exactly. It's not what I paid for. Okay, it's not what I paid for. That's that's all I'm saying, man. America is bro a white a white bro, supremacist. Can I tell you system. something, bro? Yes. I was at this resort, bro. They were treating me so well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they were treating me so well, Charlemagne, bro. It was it was absolutely amazing. It was, like... me, it was it was treating me so well, bro. They. Knew my name. Everybody at the resort knew my name. Every single person knew my name. I love it, bro. Everybody knew my name. They were so kind. Helped me with absolutely anything I could possibly want. I love it. I started thinking that they thought I was someone else. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Fuck!" I think they think I'm someone else, bro. Yo, by the way, we I, don't. We yeah. go ahead. Go 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 go. I was going to say, we don't give the hospitality industry enough credit because there's certain places you go. Mm. That's why I love going to Anguilla. Anguilla is number one source of, oh, of, yeah. of economy is tourism. Yeah. When you're at these places, yeah. they, they, they have to give you top-notch it's life service death. It's life because death. that's how they make their money. Bro, I'm telling you, man, they were the, the service was so elite, bro. I started getting real anxiety that, that I was some. Then I found out that because tourism has been hit, Obviously, everybody's down. Tourism is down, you know, most of the places. And last year, they had Bruce Willis at the resort. And this year, they had Andrew Schultz. So, Ooh, last year, they had Die Hard. This year, they got Try Hard. <laughs> <laughs> shit ain't working out. Shit ain't working out like they want it. Trust me, they don't want to be knowing my name. They want to be ignoring the fuck out of me. They want to be listening to my call and going, yup, sorry, the restaurant is full. Bruce and the family are out there. Go beat it. I was like, how tragic for y'all that I'm the famous person this year. We need to open the country back up, bro. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who was where I, I'll tell you who I, where, I, where I was at. I'll tell you who was there after we get off the podcast. A word? <sighs> a word? Oh. DMX? <laughs> I might be Illuminati, bro. Say what? On the low. I might be Illuminati on the low what? and don't know it. I might be and don't know it. <laughs> but the moral of the story is to answer your question, Taylor. Um, I don't know. All things are possible through white Jesus who scrimfs us. God That's bless. Amen and a women.
That's right. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, like, um, amen and a women. That's what I'm saying from now on. Uh, and I've heard people say that before, but that it. I mean, I get why they're saying it, but I don't yeah. get why they're saying it. It's you don't like think it's amen derived from men. No, just how it's. No, it no. doesn't. It actually means something. Hold on, let me look it up. What it means? It means no. It means is we're done. It means it's wrap. That's it. It's over. No, it means amen. something. Let's get out of here. Amen. Let's go meaning. have some brunch. Amen. Amen in Hebrew means so be it. Certainty or certainly. Yes. Is is it so? Or so be it. So be it. That's what amen means. So be it so, or be it so. Amen is commonly used after a prayer, creed, or other formal statement that is spoken to express solemn ratification or agreement. It means, is it so, or so it be. Amen is derived from the Hebrew amin, yeah. which means certainty, truth, and verily. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a great <laughs> summer. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? Can I get a, you agree with me? That's what it is. All right. All right. And all as serious. always, yeah, as always, ahead. if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit. You're absolutely right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. <laughs>